It's showtime. I think we're live. Said we're Maybe. live. All right, good. Hey, chat, are we live? <laughs> Today's date, November 24th, 2019. Thank you for tuning in to watch this edition of the SMT Sunday podcast. We have the usual guest. I'm not going to call him like a random, you know, guest. Pete, the bearded dragon, question mark. Nah, I'm a random guest. <laughs> and uh, But we do have a special first-time guest, Ricky Florida Keys. And Ricky has been a contributor to the channel for quite some time now. Uh, he's become a friend of the show and uh, definitely a very active member in the community in discussions in the, in the uh, comments section of the videos, as well as um, now becoming kind of a contributor here on the channel in the form of a podcast. So... Um, we have Ricky Florida Keys tonight, and uh, Ricky, it's good to have you on, man. Thank you. Glad to be here. I think Ricky is from Florida Keys. Yes, maybe <laughs> born in West Palm Beach. So he's all the way down there, and then Pete's all the way on the other side of the of the states. He's and over in, in two in... weeks. I'm going to be in Puerto Rico, and I'm over. I'm representing the naughty North. I'm in Cleveland, so I'm like near a lake. So we got a guy near the ocean, a guy near a lake, and then a guy in the mountains. I see the mountains every time I look out my door. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do tonight. Topic-wise, we're going to look at, I, I don't know, should we just call it like network coverage, network technology, some 5G stuff moving forward in 2020. Uh, we'll talk some 5G devices. I think between the three of us, I think we've got a wealth of knowledge and things that we could discuss about the positioning of each of the network carriers moving forward. We can look at some comparison maps, things that Ricky has presented and built and assembled, and he's going to you know, pull them up and he's going to share these things with us. And then uh, we can kind of get at it with the banter. Gonna, so, I got one question before we start, Sneed. What are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm just... Killing the last half of my coffee. So I, I tried not to drink coffee today because I'm off of work, right? So I was yeah. like, oh, I don't need coffee. But like the headache started. So I was like, all right, let me drink one cup so I can get my headache to go away. I got me some raspberry flavored hibiscus tea from a uh, local tea maker. That sounds really good, actually. That That's a large company that's available in Cleveland. I'll check it out, man. Ricky, what are you drinking on, bro? I know you got to have something. Well, I already have my coffee, so now I'm having just some water. That's my backup. I got some water, too. All right, let's do this. Let's start with the roll call. If he's still in the house, we got Puerto Rican Groot. We got Tom. Glad you guys could be here this evening. Todd might still be here if he is. Good to have you on. Gene might still be here as well. These guys were in here very early, and I don't even know if they're still around. Maverick is here, possibly. Daryl is here. Um, Maverick is talking about the Patriots and whatnot. Uh, who else is here? Who else is here? And I got to... Oh, there we go. I'm Hums totally is here. here. Yep. Rafi's in the house. He's holding down some moderating duties. And I think at the uh, towards the end of the live stream or whenever I get a chance... Um, Ricky, I'll go ahead and get you the mod capability to the um, to your new account there. Okay. All right. Matt Dub is here. Good to have you on. Gregory's in the house. 267 in the house. Good to have you on, sir. Must be frozen. <laughs> What's up, Nintendo 504? He's in the house. Michael, good to have you on, sir. Martin is here. Tim is here. So it got up to a good 12C today. Ronald, Paul, Andy, good to have you guys on. Yeah, eSIM's gonna be uh it's gonna be a thing moving forward. I think some people are gonna be kind of bummed out about some of that. I I'm hearing about some phones that are going to be released that are sim eSIM only. I'm not really a fan of that to be honest with you, but we'll talk about it later. What's up, Sean? Slaw. Hey man, if uh five hey, D devices go eSIM only. You'll you'll stop getting people 
confusing them with GSM. You know, uh, Jessica, to have you on, I was just having this conversation with Ricky. We were talking about that whole legacy tech thing and how we have pretty much moved on from it, but there's a small piece of the general population that still thinks that like GSM and CDMA is something they need to be concerned about with their devices. Uh, so I'd be we'll, concerned if they had it. Well, Pete, there is there is a small population of customers that still actually require a CDMA device. Um, I'd say that probably it's restricted to boost customers, but or spread yeah. customers, generally speaking. But but there's a reason for uh, the fact that most um, Sprint phones could not be unlocked up, up until recently. They need it. Right. All right, here's what we're going to do. Ricky, Pete, you guys ready? Ready. Okay. Mm. Here's what we're going to do first. So, Pete, we haven't discussed this yet collectively because... <laughs> You know, me and you, we do the podcast on Sundays, and it was news that came out through the week. And yep. the, and obviously, Ricky, your first time on. So here's the initial topic that we'll start with. AT&T has announced the official rollout of its low-band 5G connectivity. They've listed five markets that they're going to launch in December. They have already released additional cities that will get connected in half one of 2020 that's the nice vague explanation we get half one which means it could be january 1st which it won't be nope. or it could be like june 1st which it probably won't be but like may probably i don't know whatever my bets are august 31st after they announce a delay due but to, that's not due to people being afraid it will give them cancer I don't know. I don't think it's going to be delayed, honestly. I think they'll... Because hey, they've already listed the cities. Don't count your cards against eco-terrorists. All right. So, phone-wise, they're going to sell one phone for their low band, and it's going to be the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus 5G. It'll be 1300 bucks. So, we know what the phone is going to be. We know what the... Now, it's we know it's going to be the 850 megahertz spectrum that they are currently using for band five yep. that they are ready to use for 5g and five. The one thing I will say though, and I think this is where we probably have to kind of hedge a little bit on 5g because the, because the devices are limited. We just have this one phone and because it's so expensive, it doesn't really matter what type of spectrum concentration they put to it. Because there's not going to be a lot of people on it. You're going to get zero congestion for the first two years on 5G. Because people will be wondering why they can't receive uh, text messages on Sprint when they get their 5G devices. Uh, I'll start this off with Ricky. Ricky, what's the, in your opinion, kind of with your expertise and what you know with 850 you know, megahertz frequency... What do you think is the theoretical yield they can expect in terms of like speeds and capacity wise based on the expectation we're, we're thinking probably five megahertz concentration, maybe 10. I don't know. I know they don't have national band five. I know it's only certain places. So because their licenses are restricted regionally, take a city like Indianapolis, which they've already put the coverage map and take a city like New York. What do you what do you think about the speeds that we could see with, you know, low band five G from AT and T? Well, if you're just talking about only the five G portion, it's probably going to be close to a hundred, depending on what the what the bandwidth's going to be. But the most think, important to think about this whole thing is it's going to be non standalone and it's going to be four G plus 5G all bonded yeah. together with massive carrier ag aggregation so therefore you're going to get you're going to get a lot higher speeds wait is it going to be AT&T 4G or AT&T Yeah AT&T is going to do the same thing as T-Mobile <laughs> It's going to be what real 4G Yeah what what they're doing with this Ricky is they've got three names that they're throwing around right now for their network technologies 
they've called the first phase 5GE, right. the second phase, which is now, which they're calling 5G, Correct. and then the millimeter wave, they're calling 5G+. plus. Correct. So this marketing jargon, really what it is, is the millimeter wave is the 5G plus that nobody can access unless right. they're enterprise. That's the standalone. Right. That's the standalone. And that's the really, really fast stuff. Correct. That's millimeter wave, right? But it's like so limited and it's enterprise only. Right. The 5G we're talking about is the low band 5G that if you have a Note 10 plus 5G that you order next month and then you've got to be in one of these five markets, right? And then you got to be on one of their top two tiered plans. Correct. So it's uh, it's their $75 plan, which I forget the name of it. And then it's their $85 plan, which is the elite. Right. The 5G is just basically going to be a speed boost to the existing 4G. Because 5G E is only LTE. It's advanced but, LTE, right? It's Right. It's LTE advanced. And then now they're going to throw in some extra new frequencies with extra multiple in, multiple out antennas to make it more stable and kind of boost the signal. So you'll take your LTE uh, speed of two or 300 megabits on the high end. And then you add 5G in it, you can get five, 600 out of it. So just all depending on exactly what the bandwidth is on each band of carrier ag aggregate aggregation. I hate saying that word. Right. Um, I've said this about three or four times in recent videos. And I'll say it more in the future. It seems to me that Verizon is trying to offload LTE traffic with their 5G millimeter wave. Correct. Yeah. They're, because because they're, they're, they're not investing. Yeah, they're, they're not investing capacity. into LTE. It's 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 seriously like they've their approach to bolstering their network and dealing with congestion is just adding small cells. They haven't purchased any new spectrum. They haven't been able to get in on any of this mid band. They continue to say they will not. I can't believe that. I really don't. I think eventually they're going to get it, get on on this, the C band that's up and coming. I think they get in on some mm -hmm. of that. I think they they need it. And we have two but C bands. A, a lot of people were confused, even me at first. I thought when the new announcement was coming out, I thought it was talking about the original one. But I did some digging. I looked at the frequency. And I go, wait a minute, that's not band forty eight. I got to look, and it's band forty three is the second 280 megahertz. Uh, band 48 is the first 100 megahertz on a CBRS band. Yeah, so we have two mid bands that's going to be going up for auction. So for, the uh, 48, the, mid 2020, and then the right. end of 2020, they're talking about the next auction, which will be they're, 106, 107, whatever it may be. Right. Uh, what they're doing with that second one that's going to be probably at the end of the year, they're keeping 20 megahertz of it. They're calling it guard spectrum. Right, and and they're gonna they're gonna auction two hundred eighty and two hundred eighty, and they're gonna keep two hundred on the upper end for the satellites. Have a twenty well, megahertz well, guard band. I don't know if you caught this yet. Okay, there's there's a problem. Uh oh, and it looks like <laughs> the satellite companies want in on some of the profits of it. On the oh auction. yeah, I did hear. Oh that. my god, if that's so... I don't I don't I don't want that to slow anything down, bro. Honestly, I think the, I want carriers to start getting the spectrum right away. So by satellite companies, you mean Dish, who is a proposed carrier, yes. and AT and T? Right. No, no, I'm talking no, the ones that are famously using it for TV. Wait, which set? I might be in the dark with satellite. SpaceX. But I SpaceX ah. is trying to get on board with that. They need the lowest frequency possible so they right. get the best propagation. Well, that's yep. so. That's that first part. The, the that that's the one that's on the lower. I think that's the three. 3700 range 3700 to 3900 and then there's a second like the back end it's it's like 4100 to 4300 is all part of or 4200 it's it's somewhere in that back end of the range what i'm saying though is there's satellite companies when they decommission this stuff and they put it up for auction it's the uh the satellite tv providers that are losing this because their 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 spectrum needs have changed so that's why it's becoming available now. You're making me look up who the current satellite TV providers are. I don't know what it just looks like. They're trying to get in on some of the profits because they're they're basically saying we're the ones giving it up. We should get some of these proceeds, right? 
So I hope that doesn't slow it down because if that does, then we don't see the auction finish until 21 and then we don't right. see rollout exactly. until the end of 22. So I always, I'm from the consumer side. I don't care who gets the, the spectrum. I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm going to follow who gets the spectrum licenses, but to me, I just want to see it rolled out. Why do you think I want the T-Mobile and Sprint merger? You think I care about T-Mobile or Sprint per se? I actually don't. What I care about is the consumer is getting access to Spectrum that's basically being held in the dark because Sprint doesn't have the money to roll it out. It's seriously, it's Correct. like it's like having it's like having a bunch of stuff hoarded in a you know in, in in storage and it never sees the light of day. Yeah, it's like grandma having a cookie box and got the lid on it with a lock on it and you can't yeah. get the cookies out. Yeah, we need the cookies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Break out them cookies and milk. Yeah. Mm. So I know that's Pete, a good Pete's analogy, get, man. Pete's getting we want hungry the cookies, over bro. Um, so what what we're gonna see with AT and T doing low band is them basically saying, "Here's our five G. We went ahead and we put low band for the general consumer. They're not gonna throw tons of spectrum at it. I'm hearing five megahertz is gonna be probably the case. It's going to be regional at best." segments of cities uh indianapolis coverage map looked pretty good but then you look at a place like uh, san francisco i think they showed the coverage map for birmingham alabama it wasn't as extensive uh there's lots of different factors you know there's topography there's you know there's uh a, a, where is the hardware already pre-existing you know because we're talking about non-standalone right correct so you know, there's a lot of factors there. And from what I understand, there's not many markets that have 15 megahertz of it. It's mostly 5 and 10 for band 5. So uh, for 850 megahertz. In and of itself, I think the application's fine. I, I'd like to see it on a more national scale like what T-Mobile plans on doing. Uh, but even I haven't been able to access the T-Mobile 5G coverage map. Uh, maybe Ricky will be able to kind of show us one of those today. Uh, is there anything that you could share with us, Ricky? We'll go ahead and we'll add this to the stream. I'm sure somebody has a really up to date one. Well, there's the map right there. Okay, so what we have this hey, is low the band, Rockies correct? are getting half. Uh, Ricky, this is this is the low band, right? That is low band. Okay. This is band 71. 5G is the dark purple. So before we proceed with anything. Any place, any market that has band 71 right now is going to be low band 5G ready for T-Mobile. Correct. So if wow. you have connect so if you have connected to band 71 at any point recently, then you'll have 600 megahertz 5G access through T-Mobile. This, this map is band 71. So and this is going to be low band 5G right for T-Mobile. on with what T-Mobile launched as future 5g all hey, these areas could you, uh, could you zoom into uh cleveland i see northeast ohio right there doesn't mean cleveland gets hit it does i could see it on the map and the darker or the lighter areas are inside coverage and the darker areas is outside and car areas hey you got some uh you got some drive uh, these little area. dots don't show the tower spots this just is just a scan of the area showing where the coverage is Hey, okay, I let's, see let's... coverage where I am just by looking at that map. All right, uh, let's do this. Let's let's pan back out. Let's take a look at areas that I don't know. We'll call them city centers. Let's go to New York City. So here's T-Mobile, six hundred megahertz in New York City. There's a lot of building there. You could see that there is extensive coverage. For 600 megahertz, that makes total sense. This is they're a big market. Saying, uh, they're, they said in chat, I think it was Ronald saying New York will only get five megahertz of it. That is correct because they only have 10 by 10. And you got to give something on this you right give here. Something LT, right? This here is the 600. Everything green is 10 by 10. And Everything you need to double it. Orange with LT. is 15 by 15. Hey, where I'm 15 by 15. Everything purple is 20 by 20. Lots of 20 by 20 out there. 
Ooh. Um, Dark Purple's 25 by 25. Ooh la la. And okay, I've, hold on, I've hold on a second. I've actually been in that uh, Idaho area. Red is 15 by 25. All right, Ricky. Here's what I want to. Here's what I want to do. I want to take a market that has 10 by 10. Okay, let's take for example that type of market. Okay. If there's 10 by 10 in terms of licensing available in a place, how are they going to allocate that? Because people are not going to be adopting thousand thirteen hundred dollar phones. So. Give me an idea of what they're doing with LTE and what they're doing with 5G. They're going to be carrier aggregating LTE with this these small slivers of 5G for now. It's mainly just a capacity boost until later on when dynamic spectrum sharing comes out. And then... When if, T-Mobile gets its 2.5 gigahertz? Well, that will help as well. But what's nice about dynamic spectrum sharing is they're just going to be able to use the whole band. So this whole 10 megahertz, it's going to balance. It's like load balancing. So if there's 10% customers using L LTE, the other 90% of customers can use 5G. And it actually switches back and forth. Of course, there's a 20% loss of efficiency when you do this. So out of this 10, you're going to lose 20% of it. So that's the only downfall of it. But, yeah, but that, that's still 8 megahertz. That's still, exactly. that's still good. Okay, but it's uh, going to be a good thing. Megahertz in that scenario. These small amounts seems like a, a lower amount, but but when you're talking about five G versus four G, the efficiency is much much higher. Yeah, so, you get that lower latency. I was explaining right, to less latency. Family in uh, touring uh, mountain Colorado, like we got band seventy one on our phones. We're getting you know five megs down. But if they switch this over to 5G, yeah, we'd still be getting about 10 megs down, but it will be moving so much faster. Let's go to let's go to one more location, if you don't mind, Ricky. Let's go to let's go to an AT&T segment. Let's go where AT&T is very popular and people, you know, it's kind of their stomping grounds. Let's go to Texas. I'd say San Juan, but AT&T just sold that. Let's go to Texas. So this is AT&T country, headquarters, the whole thing, right? AT&T Stadium is in, uh, what's what's the Arlington or something? Yep. Okay, so let's look there. Uh, Texas is... Does, let's look at Dallas. Got, we got three Dallases. All right, let's look in this Dallas-Fort Worth area. Big, big... Uh, AT&T country. Yeah, they're there. doing the upgrades now. See, they just started on the northern side of the Texas, and they're working way down. A lot That's of this lot is work in progress. Lot. There's This is about two weeks behind, too. So even though this just comes out 1121, I, there's some still some stuffed towers that's come out that's not on the, this map yet. This map is kind of a little delayed. So, Okay, so here's what I'm going to go ahead and say. For December, moving forward, what we see between T-Mobile and AT&T with low band 5G. AT&T's version of low band 5G for now is going to be limited to a handful of markets. It's going to be limited in how much spectrum they allocate to it. It's not going to impress anyone. They're trying to uh, snipe T-Mobile's holdings in uh, Rhode Island. T-Mobile's 5G, the low band is going to be clearly much more national, way more <laughs> in terms of expanded coverage. I'll be the fast fact, 5G, though. I, it, right, but what I'm going to say is this. I could actually tell people, if you want 5G coverage, there's only one carrier it makes sense to go and buy a, an expensive phone for, and it's T-Mobile. It doesn't make sense to buy a $1,300 phone if you want AT&T 5G, nobody should rush out and go and get AT&T 5G coverage. We could rush like out should. and get that 2G GSM 800 coverage if they want, though. But you get what I'm saying, Pete? There's no reason to go ahead and buy a $1,300 phone, and it's in five cities, and it's 5 megahertz, 10 megahertz of concentrated spectrum. I mean, yeah, you're going to be off of the high traffic portion of the network, but 
there's no reason to rush out and be an early of a, adopter. But what I will say is if you have T-Mobile, you've already got 5G included in your coverage if you're postpaid or prepaid. And if you get a 5G compatible device that's low band ready, you know, any of these two devices that are coming up, you are, you're going to have more accessibility to 5G. So the latency advantage, uh, the speed boosting that's aggregating with LTE, it makes total sense. To tell you the truth, looking at looking at the availability for the um, the uh, Colorado area near me, might be worth it for me to get the five G variant of the Pixel Five. Well, we're we're expecting it to be five G compatible. We'll see. It. I swear, if it's not, you know how we know it will be is if the iPhone ends up being five G. <laughs> Here's one thing to remember, too. AT&T is taking band 5, that's 3G, and they're converting it to 5G just to keep up with T-Mobile because they feel like they've been outrun. So they're just refarming existing LT. So they're taking 3G and they're converting it over to 5G. And it's very limited, whereas T-Mobile... They actually added a new frequency band with more capacity and doing half LTE and half 5G. So T-Mobile does have the advantage on that. Plus, they're launching more cities because they've been building this for two years. And it's uh, only going to get better over the next two that's, years. That's true. Let me address this for Michael in the live chat. He says, with 5G, you will use lose your service indoors. Actually, not true. That's only happening with one carrier with the with the band 71 i can tell you for a fact the building penetration um you basically have to be behind a foot of concrete and steel for it to start dropping out so michael what you're speaking to is the issues that verizon is having with millimeter wave this is not an expected problem with band 71 uh, LTE, this is not going to be a problem with 600 megahertz 5G. Uh, the only carrier having these types of issues is any carrier that is, like Verizon that's using millimeter wave. That's that's the fact. The fact is Verizon has those issues because you won't T-Mobile get, has invested in 600 megahertz. They're not expecting these problems and they shouldn't have You won't get them. that delicious, you know, gig and a half download from the millimeter wave T-Mobile and uh, New York inside, but you'll get your, you know, 300 megs. Which is pretty good. I, I think for now, the way that 5G is kind of tr- like evolving and transitioning... We're even for the next two to three years, even if you have 5G access, you're still going to be connected to LTE 90% of the time, right? It may by 2021, 2022, and then maybe by 2023, people are going to start seeing a significant chunk of time where they're connected to 5G, maybe half the time, maybe, you know, a a third to half the time. You're not going to be connected to 5G all the time. But knowing that you have that accessibility wow. as part of a, a network Before management Rico. thing. That's like bathed in 5G. Well, they got blown away by the hurricane. So when they rebuilt the network, they, they upgraded. They right. right. They're yeah. 100% upgraded. Yeah. And, you know, there's somebody who's uh, a big uh, member of the community. Uh, he's been riding with me since the first 100 uh, is Landon. And, you know, he's... I, I want to say he lives on the island and he knows it very well. Hey, I he's, think he wants to meet up with me when I go down there. Yeah, he's he's really looking forward to it because they have congestion issues like really, really bad. Um, he'll be excited about this. We're getting a request to look at the coverage in Philly. All right, let's check out the coverage in Philly if you don't mind, uh, Ricky. That's a lot of 700. Now, if we were pulling up maps from Verizon, it would be a bunch of streets, individualized streets with some coverage, right? Yeah. But what we're getting with this low band is we're getting enormous segments of cities that are covered. Uh, it's The propagation is just so solid with this low band. I mean, 
which who's got network technology that's running spectrum lower than 600 megahertz Nobody. outside of like you know 2g and and you know any of the older legacy tech sprint what's sprint running legacy tech but that's what i'm saying is what's the lowest they can run and they're using it for calling they're using it for SMS. They're using it for calling. They're not using it for their data. Hey, that's some good voice calling you got there, though. <laughs> nice, Pete. And I want it to be two the, mobiles. The only CD you made that's going to be run on Sprint is just somebody that don't have a voice over LTE phone. Which would be anybody that has a phone five years older. Hey. Yeah, I say this to everybody. It's yeah, very, very important to have a voice over LTE phone. Your voice quality is going to be much better. You can use data at the same time when you're talking. We have an asterisk with Sprint, by the way. This may no longer be the case come January. See here? Look at these signals here. That's pretty Full crazy, signal. Ronald. Ronald says they run 400 megahertz for LTE in Brazil. That's nuts. And it doesn't give them cancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 400 megahertz. So here, watch this. All right, here it is. Band 31, band 72, band 73, band what 87, band 88. 450 megahertz. That's UHF. That's pretty low stuff. Hey. I mean, what's, what's the lowest stuff they're running here? In 600, the band 71. Well, well, you're talking for LTE. I'm talking... Frequency. Yeah, so like... Any frequency. Oh, so th nobody's running anything lower than 600 even for calling? Correct. Wow. This is it. Okay. You're looking at it. Okay. Hey. 71, 12, 13, 14, 17, 28, 29. Uh, band 12, that's going to be used with uh, AT&T and T-Mobile. Both use 12? Yes. Hey, that band 88 and 87 are no longer And this shows the bandwidth over here, too. Oh, so like channel allocation. Yeah. Uh, okay. We go here to the C-band. See here, you got 48 right here. 3,500 to 3,700. I'm telling you, man, that's going to be a big one, bro. But you know what's funny is, I really liked what we need. Three is the other one, and and you can kind of chime in both you guys. We got T-Mobile and Sprint trying to do this merger, right? And you've got this up and coming collection of auctions where they're going to be auctioning licenses for mid band. It's all sub six gigahertz action. Yep. We got it. We got to get a merger close. We need closure so that they can get in on the spectrum if the situation doesn't, you know, get, you know, if things don't work out with the merger. Yeah, you always going to want in on this. That auction should be delayed until we know the outcome of the merger. So they're going to vote on it, and then we should have a tentative <laughs> month of when they're going to do that, that auction. But that's why I tell people I expect a final decision, even if there's appeals, even if there, all that goes on. Like, no later than February. I'm telling you, I'm expecting the case to be the judge saying habeas corpus and the state's going nil corpus. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, let's, there is let's no talk, evidence. Uh, Ricky, leave this screen up. Let's talk okay. about this modem that's up here that's going to be in a lot of the devices in 2020. Hopefully yeah, this is coming out to 1 plus 7 5G and the Note 10 5G. The X55 modem with the latest okay. update. Okay, let's look at where it says 5G technology first. Okay, so it is going to be NR 5G compatible, right? Correct. FED and FTD, FTD and TDD compatibility. Correct. Uh, it's going to be standalone and non-standalone compatible. Correct. And it is sub-6 gigahertz compatible, so that means it's going to cover anything that's 2.5 gigahertz, uh, 850 megahertz, 600 megahertz, right? Correct. Great. Let's look at the millimeter wave. It's it's not. Why does it say millimeter wave compatible? Is that true? It is. What? Well, the modem is compatible, but you got to remember it has to have the antennas. The uh, antennas is the key. Uh, so Plus, it has to be FCC certified. Right. If it's not FCC certified, run a millimeter and sub six at the same time, it won't get approved. What's up, Carlos? Good to have you on. Pete, I don't know if you remember this. I don't know how good your memory is. It's generally pretty good. Pete, we, See, look here. 
we had a conversation about this several months ago and we were talking about 5g phones how are the manufacturers when they start to attach these antenna to these modems were they going to be able to put on enough antenna to cover low band mid band and millimeter wave and so far the answer is no there there are also fcc issues that's correct every device has to be certified on each frequency so every one of these bands has to work plus they have to work together if you transmit on one band and then it interferes with the other band and creates a sporadic emission out of another band it pa- it fails yeah right uh can we go back to the the modem specifications ricky okay uh Okay, I got some yeah, tabs. Okay, right there. So now that we've covered that, let's take a look at some of these antenna compatibilities. I see. Let's just get out of the whole millimeter wave thing. Let's go sub six gigahertz. It says two hundred megahertz bandwidth. So that means there's tons of potential in running lots of different compatible. Like so, when you're looking at like uh, T-Mobile's access with this type of phone, uh, it's got oh it multi carrier. Right, it can run eight carriers. Two by two MIMO, so speed wise or four by four MIMO speed wise, it's going to be really, really fast. We've got download speeds potentially. This is theoretical. Seven gigs. They'll never see that, but it's okay. Uh, we've got upload hey. speed approaching three gigs. They'll never see that either. But we, we had the we had some like what was it like gig and a half cap for LTE that we're never going to see. Uh. I see the LTE tech there, Pete. Uh, We're still not going to see it. I, I see the LTE tech mentioned there. It's it's still pretty standard. It's going to be band 46 and 48 compatible. Uh, it's still going to have all the legacy tech compatible. I see all of them mentioned there. Look at the category speeds, though. So even LT only. You know, should they That's aggregate? That's what I was saying. Yeah. If everybody is not crazy about 5G right now. But 4G is out there, and with this new modem, it's going to harness the speeds out of 4G more than it's going to harness the speeds out of 5G since it's just getting started. When you take both technologies and you blend them together, you're going to have a super fast phone right here. So everybody keeps saying it's only going to be slow speeds, but I'm just looking at what I see here and looking what I see on the maps as far as what's being put out there, and... It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see the first speed test on December 6th because it's going to blow people's minds. So they're going to have to continue to manage the LTE connections. Uh, If you have the potential to have seven or eight carrier aggregation, I think that should be utilized. You know, I could see a lot of band 46 and 48 application to get that type of speed. Well, Uh, four, four and 66 is the same. You either use four, which is less bandwidth, when you add no, no, no. I said, I said 46. Oh, 46. So LA, we're talking yeah, unlicensed yeah, spectrum, LTE, right? Okay. Yeah. Because right. that, Which that's, this the has stuff, that too. that's the stuff I'm talking about moving forward when people are in places where there's tons of network strain and lots of congestion. The carriers are looking there. They're not just looking 5G. They're going to be looking at the, and mm-hmm. like with the C band, the CBRS spectrum that's going to be available next year, probably. I think that stuff gets developed along with the 5G just as aggressively. So, and you want to hear what else is good? Part of this category two upgrade that just come out. See this LAA? Mm-hmm. Guess what they're going to be able to do with that now coming up in the next multi carrier aggregation. Well, that's already in there. They're going to do 5G on band 46. So 46N? Yeah, it's going to be N46. Now, do you know? So, do so you know why carrier that's carrier aggregation? But on hold on. As well. but hold on. Why do you think they're doing that? Because you get less latency and it's more efficient. You get more speeds. Can we talk about that, please? Because I don't think people understand this this little thing about 5G. 5G yeah. is not just about speed. Exactly. It's how about many the how many videos do I have to mention this? 
Everybody exactly. says they say things like this to me, Ricky. We're going to have to sue Verizon for false advertising has, for them to stop no, no, believing no, 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 no. it. No, no, it has nothing to do with Verizon. P. I wish I could blame them for this, but here's what people keep saying: <laughs> I don't care about five G if I'm getting 150 megabits per second. I they, don't either. They are, they are missing the point. And I had a there was a commenter, 65 Hoopty. Uh, he's been on you know the in the channel comments for a long time. His question is, well, what are we going to be able to do with 5G if the download speeds are just, you know, whatever? Like, what are we, what are we missing out on? If, I, well, how, how can you innovate if your network doesn't support the innovation? So, like, what I tell people is, if, if the question is always, I can't innovate if I don't have the network. Well, here's the network. Innovate. Your latency is now going to be below 10 milliseconds. Now it's going to be below five milliseconds. Now you can do things like getting all these sensors and radars. Now you could do the autonomous vehicles. You can get into robotics. You, you can get automated machinery. Flag. Right. Yeah, latency is the key. The lower the ping, the better. But it's hard to get through to some of the people that are, are short-sighted and they only see a download speed as some measure of effectiveness of 5G. Very true. I and don't you know care. what's helping to get the ping down? It's this thing right here. 4x4 four four MIMO. Multiple yep. in, multiple out. It you, creates a more stable stream of signal. Because basically the way it works is you got you got four antennas that's listening to the device, your phone. Right. Now, as you're walking around, your phone, the signal's going up and down. So the first receiver picks it up good. But as you go, the signal gets better across the four different receivers. So therefore it automatically rapidly switches. So it constantly gives you the best signal to your phone and then from the phone to the tower. And that's, what's making the speeds more stable. It's unlike, you know, that's why they have to use MIMO on millimeter wave because it's such narrow bandwidth or millimeter wave. It's short wavelength that mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I saw a video where somebody had full signal 5g on millimeter wave they closed the door which was glass door oh my god and the signal went away it had <laughs> zero signal they opened the door back up it was full signal i mean and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong millimeter wave wave has its place right absolutely does but if you're outdoors to get things no going right on. now to get like or it's not raining <laughs> and you're no foggy in the wind. It's not, it's not, it's, you can't convince people to buy 5G devices if you're rolling out millimeter wave. Only correct. Yes. There's so, no way you could convince them to get on this technology. Yeah. So Steve got a while ago, a 5G phone with millimeter wave that would have worked with uh, T-Mobile's in Cleveland, but it turned out to be iffy and wasn't worth really pursuing a different one. I think what I'm going to do, Pete, is for the sake of the channel, I really didn't want to do this, but based on how extended the network appears that it's going to be with T-Mobile, I think I'm going to bite the bullet. I think I'm going to have to bite the bullet at some point in Pete, the near future myself. And Ricky, are, are you a customer of T-Mobile? Yeah, I have Metro. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get a 5G device probably. Pete, are, I'm guessing you will too. Um, I might have to get two. Well, Pete, I will buy the one that you don't get. If so, if you get the Note 10 5G, I'll get the One Plus. Uh, I might be mid year though. Okay, well, I'm probably based on how much Band 71 is available in my area. I think it makes sense for me to go ahead and get in on this. I think yeah, you got a lot be... in your area. I have a fair bit in my area too, and I think it will be great for traveling and. Showing people how good uh, good the service is on campus. I just want to say to all of the subscribers and viewers out there, there's only one company that has me excited about 5G. Me I feel too. it in my jellies, man. I feel it in my jellies. It's T-Mobile. There's no AT&T, Verizon. They don't, it doesn't do anything for me. I don't the even. Company that has me even remotely intrigued in this new technology is T-Mobile. They're the only ones. I don't even care about T-Mobile's millimeter wave 5G in uh, certain pockets of the country. I just want the low band. Yeah, I don't... It doesn't do anything for me. 
The millimeter wave doesn't do anything for me. I am excited about the 2.5, though. Oh, the 2.5 is nice, and the low band would be great if they could put it at Coors Field. Ricky, what do you think about the the 2.5 acquisition in in terms of the merger? What do you think about that, man, in terms of moving forward next year, year after? What does that do for T-Mobile's network? Well, it's going to increase the, the capacity and the speed as well. And when they launch with T-Mobile's help, N41, 5G, nationwide. Oh, so they're going to call it N41, right? Yeah, and okay. N just means 5G. But it's going to yeah. be N, yep. N41. And it's, so uh, it, it's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, can you imagine mixing 71 and 41 together? Hmm. Especially that, with all the bandwidth that has, and if T-Mobile can get in on the auction, auction 105, and get some of that band 48, mm. some of that 100 megahertz that they're selling, how if, much? Do if they can get they 40, of 40 of it nationwide, can you imagine what that would do? Do they even need 40 of it nationwide? They don't, but like, if they what got if they the were to money, get 20? They could win what the, if they're going to get bids, 20 of it? it? It's pretty much blocking <laughs> big red and big big blue. You know, it, it's a game oh, right big now. Red. So. I'm telling you right now, Big Red so, is going to be hyper aggressive next year. I'm telling you, man. So There's no much? way they can do this with millimeter wave. There is no way. Well, what, no the, way. what Verizon is going to do is they're going to launch DSS, right, in 2020, right, and they're going to start applying that to band 13 and band two, band 66. But I'm I've been a customer with Verizon, Ricky, for and it, and it's going to load balance and basically <laughs> as people get new 5G phones, then it's all going to automatically you know, lower down the percentage of usage on the towers. And that's the only way they could do it. Well, Ricky, you only have I've been a customer bands. for two decades. And what I've seen happen to Verizon's network in the last five years is absurd. It has right. gone, it has gone from probably the most capacitive network. Yes. To probably the most congested network in just True. the course of five years, because people's usage has changed. The number of customers Verizon has is pretty steady. Their growth is really slow at this point. Correct. The difference is, is they're now doing more with the network. So now they're live streaming. Now people are downloading. Now people are are doing all this video streaming, you know, Netflix and Hulu and right. So that is the new thing. The evolution sure. of their network is not it's not happening fast enough. They're not able to keep up because their True. solution for the last year in the Cleveland area has been small cell, small, small. They're putting a small cell everywhere. Like I'm, I'm driving up the busiest street in Cleveland. It's Lorraine road. There's literally a Verizon small cell every mile. And we get comparable speeds on T-Mobile, don't we? But now even T-Mobile is having that crunch issue. Oh yeah, they are. So they're because they're going through that, that network growing pain, right? Yep. And now they have to do the same thing. So, at and they already did their thing, bro. 2018 and 19, they invested tons of money. We're talking, what, $50 billion in the last two years? Mm-hmm. Seriously, they did like $23 billion, uh, in 2019. And they did uh, 20-some billion the year before. And the contract they now have with Band 14, with the uh, first responders net, right? Yep. They've inv- they're ready moving forward. Verizon has to make a move. T-Mobile's in the process of making a move. That's kind of the way things are going moving forward. So I do have a question for Ricky. 40 uh, megahertz of that uh, C-band, are you expecting T-Mobile US to be using the uh, DT um, Deutsche Bank uh, Platinum card? Probably. You got to use somebody's card. (laughs) Can Can we come to a consensus? Sub 6 is better than millimeter wave? Yes. I mean hit, hit uh hit one if you agree with that and leave the stream if you don't. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> with with the backbone of LTE added with low band 5G, it's gonna be good. And then as more bandwidth is added to low band and mid band, and then once you go standalone, it's gonna be crazy. You're gonna easily see one gigabyte down easy with pings way under ten. Sometimes under five, but we need this merger. If the states would just stop being a blippity blip 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 and get this <laughs> thing going, 
they're holding progress up. So, but See, big red, big blue's paying them. So, I would, we know that. I'm, I'm for the consumer side of things. I don't care hold necessarily up, that. I have a better one. Hit the like button if you agree that sub six is better than millimeter wave. I'm so I'm from the consumer side of this argument. You know, people want to poo poo the merger and it's going to kill competition. I just look at this from an accessibility standpoint. I'm just I'm looking at it like, can we get the spectrum freed up from the the doldrums of Sprint because they can't afford to roll it out? They have trouble with LTE. We're going to start talking five G, really. Uh, so to me, it's just, let's get it into the hands of a company that will use it. I would say the same thing if a cable operator came in and said, well, we're ready to roll out 2.5. We're going to do it. I'd say, fine, whatever. I don't really care who does it. I'm just glad it's T-Mobile because I believe in what T-Mobile does based on a track record. They had to play catch up in LT and they succeeded. So Carlos wants to jump in and voice his opinions if you're open to it. What's that, Pete? Carlos S. wants you jump in and voice his opinions if you're interested. Oh, Carlos is a friend of the show. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, let's... Uh, Carlos, I'll be sending you a link. Hang tight, bud. What are we looking at now, Rick? We're looking at Root Metrics, which does a analysis of all the carriers. This is pure raw data. For future T-Mobile. This is Sprint. Here's yeah, future slow, mobile. moderate, fast, faster, fastest. And then when you go over here to AT and T, not much better. But see, when you look at stuff like this, it's not 100% perfect, and I'll explain why. I would say we have at least 35% of customers on all four carriers, not just one alone, running around with phones with low category modems in there, like Cat5, Cat6, which some don't even have carrier aggregation, and missing Pretty certain cool bands. So when you got handicapped phones out here running around... They shouldn't be included. It's going to provide false... It's going to make it look worse for the carriers, so... And that's one thing I like about T-Mobile. They are discontinuing phones quickly and having current phones. And they're offering low-end phones, mid-phones, mid and high-end phone, flagship phones. They're giving people a chance, to, you know, no matter what your budget is, to be able to get involved with the new technology. When we look here at Verizon... They have pockets of really good speeds. Of course, that's probably where they're doing upgrades. One second, please. Ronald, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you uh, pushing out the reminder for everybody to like the video. Uh, if you guys could, if you haven't done so and you're just getting in, please do like the video. Uh, do say hello to the SMT and company. I've got Ricky Florida Keys, special guest. I've got the Bearded Dragon himself, Pete. We are here in the live, and we're glad to have you guys we may have on the podcast. Too soon. <clears throat> and I'm actually I'm waiting to see if Carlos will be joining us here. We'll see what happens. So Robert uh, Mantoya brought something up. If you looked at the Verizon maps in Denver, uh, to make sense of it, you need to have a doctorate in map making. Basically, if you're in Denver on Verizon and you're using 5G, if you trip, your battery is going to die. Do me a favor, Rick, if you could. Let's let's go over to Northeast Ohio. Let's go to the Cleveland area. I've speed tested and accessed every network in the area. I'm just curious to see what it's showing because now that I've been using the AT&T network and... I've got a live sim for the three carriers, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. I want to kind of take a look at that. Uh, Carlos, let me know when you're ready to jump in. Let me get a sign. Let me know. Get a thumbs up or something. Obed says Sprint it looks like it's a regional carrier. <laughs> I see a lot of fast bits on uh, T-Mobile there. Hey, what's going on, P? What's going on? 
Hey, Carlos. Going good to have you on, me. man. What's going on, Ricky? Hello yeah, there. Carlos in the house. Yeah, man. All right, Carlos, so we what we're doing, we're, we're accessing these uh, different coverage maps. We're taking a look at, you know, network performance across the nation. Maybe yeah. you could kind of tell us what's going on in the Vegas area after we wrap up here with the CLE. What is ASL? In the Vegas area, man, you already know we got a lot of congestion over here, but like uh at and T's actually been doing a lot of things over here lately it's been speeding up i've been seeing speeds over 200 megs wow and and that's not even on their fake 5g crap that they call <laughs> <laughs> man but dub says hi joseph T says hi hey what's going on everybody but t-mobile i mean it's good but like there's a lot of congestion they need this merger we need that 2.5 live with it let's see if ricky can do this Watch this. Obed says, "Is Sprint a regional carrier currently?" Um, Ricky, could you Basically. pull up? Could you pull up the native network for Sprint? I don't want roaming agreements included. I just want their native network. Like if you were using, um, if you were using Boost, for example, you wouldn't have any access to any roaming on T-Mobile or any other carrier, right? Like I brought a couple of phones here just to show you guys right here, and uh, I'm right now at home here in the Henderson area, and show you what stuff looks like out here. Yeah, just give us one second, Carlos, and then we'll get yeah. to that. All right, so this would be we're accessing this on which website, Ricky? This is Cell Mapper. Okay, they use that's all crowdsourced, right? Yeah, yeah. They also use open street maps. Jamil, thank you for the super chat, brother. And where's he Appreciate at? Appreciate you. Uh, there was just somebody who was asking, which I have said time and time again, Pete, you feel the same way. We feel that Sprint is a regional carrier at best. At we best. Have, they're they're we can't also see, a spectrum order. Yeah, we can't, we can't see them as national because their LTE is not available on a national scale. They rely so heavily on roaming agreements to get their network deficiencies covered. And that's what people don't understand. If it wasn't for those roaming agreements, they wouldn't even be working nationwide. Hey, T-Mobile needed roaming agreements um, up until recently, but um, at, le at least uh, T well, T-Mobile needed the roaming agreements they were a growing carrier. Sprint needs roaming agreements after being an established carrier longer than T-Mobile has been a carrier. You know, exactly. if I could say one thing, like I only got one statement to make to Letitia James. My state, my question to her would be like, have you tried Sprint service before? And yeah, like, <laughs> you know, turn off roaming on Sprint, walk, Walk to Staten Island. Tell us if you have service. That's seriously because I know for a fact, bro. And I've a actually go to Rochester. <laughs> you got Carlos sending super chats and he's part of the podcast. <laughs> Carlos, you're crazy, bro. Bro, that's how we do it, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate you. Well, I hope okay. Carlos joins my new channel as I get it off the ground. That's all I can say. I got say. you. I got you, bro. No worries, man. I'll be there. Just send me the link. I'm not competing with SMT. I'm just going to be an extra help. And like on the nights he's not live, I will probably go in live and kind of doing the same thing with question hey, and answer. You better give me moderating status on your channel, bro. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> will. <laughs> but that's what I was thinking too. I was going to start doing a channel and I'm going to, since I'm always driving around everywhere, you okay. know, show real life speed tests, you know, like let people know the coverage is like see real life coverage time. Can we, can we stay on this right here? The sprint coverage? Yes. Can we go to that percentage breakdown again? Right. Yeah, this breaks down every single state. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's do... 22.6. That's less we... than a third of the state. Hold on. Can we just count how many states? We're going to start at Alabama. We're going to go all the way down. Let's count how many states. What's, what's our threshold? Can we make it 60%? Yeah. Let's count how many states have 60% or less. LT coverage. Let's see, we got oh, Alaska. Okay, well. <laughs> Alaska zero. They don't they don't Alaska. Bro, they basically told Alaska to hold an L, bro. 
Uh, here, you're taking it oh, on. No, no. It's easier counting the states where they have more than 60%. Let's do that. All right. We're going to count how many states I, have I more than counted, 60%. I already counted 10 up to Iowa already that have less than 60%. Yeah, that's why we're doing more. Let's see. We've got Connecticut, <laughs> Delaware, um, Florida. I can't read I anymore. Don't want to go too small. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's got Pete that 25 money up. vision, right? Yep. So we got, uh, let's see, Our Connecticut, Delaware, um, Illinois, Indiana, Maine. That's five so far. If you could go down the list. So five and 13. <laughs> <laughs> Maryland. Bro, they have zero coverage in Montana. Zero. <laughs> they have zero. That's, That's two states with zero percent. Wait, how do they have 95% in Mississippi? <laughs> how do they have 6% in North Dakota? That's crazy. New Jersey. <laughs> okay. I can answer that question. It's oh, called that's, Band okay. 26. It's oh, what that's they stole yeah. from Nextel. Oregon. No, they didn't you... steal it from Nextel. They bought Nextel. Come on, Ohio, bro. Ohio, we get said. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Look, if, if I was going to tell somebody, you're considering a carrier, and... Like what's 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 going to be the cutoff? A state's got to have ninety percent or better coverage, right? So well, it so, depends on if it's populated or not. We got yeah, I mean thirteen. I mean, they're not going to put a tower out there if there's nobody living there. Hey, man, if you look at Ohio, we've got you know we got seventeen million people, or no, no, excuse me, twelve million people. We got twelve million people in Ohio. Why is it eighty-one percent? A big shout out. <laughs> to check the tech with us with the super chat thank you bro appreciate you supporting uh the college fund yes it means college fund so uh, we got 13 states with greater than 60. Bro, how do you have how do you have zero percent in multiple states how <laughs> out of 52. there's only 52 states it's not like there's 700 states but <laughs> they, you know that a lot of uh sprints they depend on uh and like montana they use us cellular as their roaming agreement right Regional carriers, right? So Wait, that's basically what they're doing is piggyback. Here's T Mobile. Well, Alaska. Look at these numbers. Wait, Thanks, MT Houston, Texas, for the super chat. Let's Thank you. Do an 80% oh. threshold with T Mobile, and that's more than 50% just scrolling through. And they got Wyoming covered too. Wyoming, remember, Wyoming was always a roaming uh, state too with US Sailor. They were using US Sailor on top of it too. They've also been using that's Union that. Telephone. Yep. And I can tell you that that Wyoming number is outdated at the moment. It's higher. Well, this it's, yeah, it should be because it, I remember I was just in Wyoming driving through. This came tomorrow. out in October 2019. It's it's this is all pretty new. Well, it should be more, bro, because I was just there in the Wyoming, only right, through Casper. Of Wyoming in in native T-Mobile. Here's Verizon. Big oh, red. Hey, they have uh, less than two percent. Bro, that is that is a lot of ninety plus percent. Yep, that is a lot. And people ask me, who do I recommend? And I hate to say it. Yep. But if you if you move, if for work, if you, bro, ask a trucker who is your provider. Exactly. Carlos, what are they gonna say, bro? Gonna say Verizon. Verizon. Yep. Like all my friends that are truck drivers have Verizon. Or, or AT and T, AT and T, and AT and T. Now you could say is probably right up there because of Band fourteen. It really changes the game for them, right? Exactly. I have a buddy that owns his own semi truck business here, and he switched from T Mobile over to Verizon just because he had to. He had no choice. He wasn't getting the work. It wasn't getting pinged to his phone. That's ridiculous. It can't be that way. That's why this merger needs to happen, and New York and California need to just put a sock in it and let it happen already. How? We merger happens california would be saving hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on cell phone coverage if they went over to t-mobile hold on a second guys hold on i could tell you right now based like i've said this time and time again what robert is saying i'm going to echo that verizon if you move T-Mobile, if it's good in your area, is great to have. 
Uh, Band 71 is going to change the game, though. Band 71 makes T-Mobile a legit national carrier. Yeah, Band 71 is definitely going to help the rural coverage more than the city areas. Oh, yeah. But remember, it's a network is only as good as its weakest point. Right. Because somebody could have, you know, they could have Verizon and talk about how great it is because it is for them. And then you ask somebody who lives in Southern California, like, man, Verizon is slow. You know, that's that's the concept of the idea of that, like, it matters from market to market, you know, which carry you should have. That's why these analytics are important. Sorry about that, guys. Just placing an order in for some dinner. It's okay. <laughs> what you get in Panda Express? Yep. You heard it, Pete. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, I'll be I'm gonna I'm gonna step out for like 90 seconds. You guys hold it okay. down. Go ahead. And as you see here, who's got the best 4G coverage? We're talking about square miles coverage. T Mobile actually creeped ahead by a percent. Ooh la la. So and right now T Mobile and ATT are neck and neck. And a lot of those square mileage. Dead. A lot of those dead areas for coverage for the top three are like places nobody lives. Hey, but it's always nice to get them covered if you can. You know, you got a lot oh, of people yeah. that do RVing and you know camping. You, know. you you need weather alerts if you're camping. Exactly. But. Um, you know, until we get those UHF frequencies, it, it might be a little rough getting those signals over some mountains. Oh, yeah. But what, I, what I'm saying, though, is like Sprint. Okay, look, Sprint, they have all this spectrum. They have more spectrum than all the than all the top three put together. Yeah, they're a spectrum but they, hoarder. But they don't know how to utilize that spectrum. They could have been killing the market. They could have been number one. If they wouldn't have had such crappy management, yeah, like company. if 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 they had uh, Neville and uh, Braxton, it, there wouldn't be a T-Mobile. Exactly, T it, it would have been Sprint buying T-Mobile. It would have been the other way around. Yep, the T-Mobile would be <laughs> off their AT and T's uh, concessions and floundering and verizon would be buying them up for 50 bill or uh, not verizon sprint would probably be buying them up for 13 mil exactly and that and that's the problem is sprint does have all those resources t-mobile with t-mobile's ability those resources could get put into play and i think they will smoke the crap out of verizon and at t both they the the combined networks give me a a, a tech rager Exactly. That 2.5, it's 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 a very powerful band. Like that 41, trust me, you can get really good speeds with it when it's available. <laughs> That's the key word. And 41, is, if I remember correctly, is largely nationwide, at yeah. least in most metropolitan areas. Exactly. Exactly, Pete. I, I can show you some of the speeds that I've gotten with it. <laughs> And I'm telling you, it it's amazing, but the thi but the thing is, is not they all can't there. afford deployment. Exactly, it, and they can't take out a loan because of their negative cash flow to bolster the deployment, so they could get more people to offset their negative cash flow, which is why they're a dead carrier. Pete, like over there, I was just in uh, California the other day. And tell me why I'm getting upload speeds with Sprint at 19.6, 25.5, stuff like that when it's on band 41. Imagine if they imagine because if they, did, they if, decided to take you off 3G and allow you to aggregate carriers. If if you don't mind me uh, jumping in here, Carlos, I can answer your question. So, band 41 is awesome, and to be honest with you, there's only two reasons, and there's a lot of cons to the merger but the two things that t-mobile wants it's legit it's band 41 and it's the 54 million customers yeah. outside of that they're taking on a ton of debt yeah it's a lot Tons. of debt. <laughs> the 54 million customers are like icing on the cake though the the real That's prize is market the share boost. <laughs> look pete yeah i know it's huge market share but the the t-mobile has get it back on their own merits 
Right. T-Mobile has added over 1 million customers every quarter for the last six, seven years. Which is unprecedented in most postpaid industries unless you have a cartel. Yeah. God, man, it's it's and they don't have a cartel. <laughs> <laughs> but trust me, though, T-Mobile will know what to do with that spectrum, though. We they already know what to do with the spectrum. They're uh, watering it to the mouth. What are you talking about? I'm not watering at the mouth when I think no, T-Mobile is no. watering at the mouth on the spectrum. When when I think of what they can do with the spectrum, I'm flooding the ground around me with the water coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, yesterday I, I talked to this one guy over here by my house they're putting up a new T-Mobile tower they're decommissioning one and putting up a new one is he gonna get they're cancer? Even saying that they're, they're, <laughs> no I mean they're idiots if they believe that but yep. you know but other but they said that they're going to be putting they're putting 2.5 band 41 on their towers too like around yeah. the valley they've been doing that already like on a lot of T-Mobile new- towers 71 towers probably have 41 on them also. Yeah, they're I'm pretty they're, sure they said all they got to do is a switch and done. I'm pretty sure it that the way they configure the 2.5 connectivity is the same way they would configure CB CBRS and C band and all of that. It's all sub 6. It's all hardware wise it's going to be set up the yeah, same. Yeah, they're macro sites. Yeah, so it's not going to make a difference, you know, whatever they're, they're trying to future proof. 48 43. Right. Yeah. There's a chance for a large portion of the U.S. 41 is, has been deployed. They're just waiting to turn it on. Yeah. Well, all the antenna upgrades they're doing also is is ready for whatever they throw at it. It's a matter of just changing out the radio. The antenna and, and the base units down in the equipment house are all ready. Well, they, in they can simply the climb radio. the tower up and just switch out the radio. You know what Verizon's doing over here? Verizon is reconfiguring their locations of their macro sites. So, like, probably two or three miles from my house, they took down a tower, like, completely decommissioned it, and then they rebuilt a new one. They haven't put up the antennas yet, but they changed the location on it. They put it by the interstate. And I'm thinking that they're kind of re they're readdressing what they need to do for their network. Verizon's needs have changed a lot. In the last five years, I was saying it earlier, Carlos. Are you seeing that as well in your area? Are you seeing action from Verizon repositioning macro sites, changing antenna configurations, and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah, I've been seeing that yeah. too. Because now my signal at my house with Verizon used to be only two bars to the point it was so bad that I had one of those little uh, micro cell booster, those booster cells. Yeah. And then yeah. out of nowhere, my signal one day, I, the, uh, the, I didn't know that the cell was off, but I have full signal still. I was like, what the heck? So Verizon did readjust the tower whatever they did and now i'm getting speeds of like 60 to 120 megs and 40 on the upload am i gonna have a a, a package in the mail pretty soon carlos yes you are yeah. it went out oh my god Man. I'm, getting, I'm getting rid of cox bro it went in there and on top of it i included a sprint sim card also what and Man, an AT&T no, bro, you oh. don't you don't want to send me a sprint sim card. You don't you don't want to see this, bro. Hey, hey, bro. You know what? It's better to know. It's it's good to show the people. You know, <sighs> That's friends true. don't That's let true. friends say no. <laughs> the problem is over here, Carlos. Where they have LT, it's good. But there's a lot of 3G over here, man. Well, that's why you gotta. We have to show the people, like, hey, you know what? It's not what you guys think it is. Like, yes, Sprint can be good in certain areas, but it's not everywhere. So, hey, Carlos, a spade's a spade, right? Exactly. Okay, so, I don't so, want to have to do this, bro. <laughs> hey, just hey, it's the tr- truth hurts. Truth hurts. Go ahead, Pete. So my next door neighbor has Sprint. He says the Wi-Fi around here is great. What? Yeah. <laughs> Wi-Fi, yeah, the Wi-Fi around here is great. Cool. <laughs> he leaves it open. Nope. But he but he connects to a bunch of people and he can make phone calls. Oh, so. he's a hacker. No. So he, he has friends and he can make phone calls. But so if he has his data, he's on Wi-Fi. Basically, without Wi-Fi, calling his phone is a dead brick. Or it's a paperweight, no. bro. If, without Wi-Fi calling, 
You can't download. Without Wi-Fi calling, he'll text you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Sprint's got that uh, low, that um, CDMA band for texting me. Yeah, they still do, actually. Hey, bro, you know how many times in Cleveland I've called friends that have Sprint, and then they start breaking up, and they say, oh, I'll I call you back. I got Sprint. Sprint customers. I you know, like stand it. So what I'm what I'm trying to emphasize is there are certain markets in the U.S. that are going to benefit so greatly from the merger that it legit is going to change customer satisfaction. Like there are people that are kind of like they're kind of stuck with Sprint because they get a great deal from them and they don't want to change their plan. They don't want to change carriers, but they're like, man, I wish my coverage was better. When they change over to T-Mobile, they'll be like, wait, I can use my phone outside of my house. <laughs> it's just. It's frustrating over here, man. Ricky, is there anything else you want to share with us visually? What you have? Yeah, in I just terms want to go like... over and kind of show people what it looks like on different bands as far as the propagation goes, and see what kind of coverage you get between them. Okay, and so I'll let's pick look some at some random um... states around the United States and some areas to to kind Great. of show. All right, so what this he's going to picture... do, guys? He's going to show us these uh, antenna configurations and the carriers, and then he's going to compare propagation between like band 71 and band two and other types of frequencies hey ricky had a question to ask you boss what yes. what's, what's up with the uh, seven carrier aggregation I, I heard that that's a thing coming soon yeah the x55 modem it's coming out on the two new 5g phones you should have been okay. here when we were showing that off uh, <laughs> i i came in kind of late man i came in kind of late I, I had to get a couple of business calls done man yeah well <laughs> everybody keeps saying i don't need 5g it's in the early stages. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. I keep hearing it over and over again. But what they don't understand, this new X55 modem helps out more on LTE than it does for 5G. 5G is just the icing on the cake, basically. So oh. ba basically what it's going to do is it's going to do this massive MIMO and carrier aggravation for 4G and 5G, blend it all together, and spit you out a nice, nice speed. So for these people who are saying... I can't watch my YouTube or my or my Netflix. I get slowdowns. It, it hiccups. It breaks up. Uh, all of those complaints out there. This is the perfect opportunity to have the latest technology. It's going to get you the better latency, lower ping, and give you a little bit better, faster speeds, plus extra coverage with what T-Mobile is doing with the rural areas. Okay. So so I must say somebody commented about the perk of Disney Plus on Verizon. Um, where I am, the cost difference between T-Mobile and Verizon, I can buy 10 Disney Plus subscriptions. <laughs> and they give me $10 for a YouTube. There you go. I, I like the Disney Plus perk, Pete. Chill out, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty it's actually pretty nice. I'm using it myself. Hey, yeah, Steve, but Pete, you got the bundle, don't you? Yeah, if you don't have yeah. it, I'd do the bundle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got the bundle, so you get Hulu oh. Live, or you get Hulu, Disney Plus, and ESPN Plus for thirteen bucks. I get Hulu you new commercials. You see, I already I got the Disney Plus, and then right, since right. I have the Sprint, I got the Hulu already. So, you know, all I all I'm missing is the ESPN Plus. That's bro, it, bro. What's crazy is you got like every carrier, so you also have like the Netflix on us. You got all that yeah. stuff in there. Bro, you have like 30 subscriptions. How do you know all your passwords? Dude, he's a wireless <laughs> subscription. Um, what do you call it? A portfolio. Collector. Oh, got, you know, there's gun got the, collectors out there. I got the, I got well, the phones he's a right wireless here, bro. collector. <laughs> you got anything 5G yet, Carlos? Just a Note 10 plus 5G for Verizon, and then I got the LG V50 for Sprint. I'm sure he has. So you got a millimeter wave and you got a mid-band. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me know if you need that uh, T-Mobile one, man. I got the plug. Wait a minute. So <laughs> you talking low band? No. When you, when the five when the five G comes out for T-Mobile, when the new McLaren five G comes out and all that, uh, let me know. Yeah, they just uh, got, got type accepted I'm, by FCC. Also. Yeah, count me yeah. in. Two count me in ago. on that, bro. Count me in. I, you're gonna, have, you're gonna have to share that with the share us the plug price. Of that course, man. Awesome. I might need to get two. Well, let me know, man. When that time like, comes, it'll I can get it the same day or the next day. I know so I know somebody that's a store manager at T Mobile. Hey bro, oh, nice. Carlos is flexing right now. Awesome. Oh yeah. As he's chugging that Red Bull, he's flexing. 
No. Bet. <laughs> Dude, but look, hey, you know what's crazy? I'm surprised that this shit even works at my house, man. Mm. What is it? If it turns on, there you go. That's what we, that's spread. What is it? That's, uh, that's okay. spread right there. You have service. Even, spread. Yeah. But what I'm saying, what I was showing though, is the speeds are not that they're not that bad when you get that band. Yeah, that's it's bad. good actually. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I mean that those are all usable. The capacity is is decent. But exactly, Carlos, we're but... talking about a we're talking about a company that oh yeah it's dead when <laughs> right but you bro they've literally gone from eighty plus million subs to fifty four so to say that their network has some capacity I mean of course it's going to have they have nobody's on it <laughs> nobody's on it so like if there's ten people that are randomly selected from any city they're the smallest portion occupying the network it's like you've got all this potential with all of this network spectrum and it doesn't it's not even needed because the the, the customers aren't even there exactly and it's sad but that's just the way the cookie crumbles man that nextel thing really messed them up bad <laughs> radio shack nextel ymax uh hesse everything they touch turns to stone what the heck bro that's AT and T right there, at my house. Yeah, look at whoa, oh, uh, 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 it, what, uh. Go oh, on, I boy. thought we were gonna get to two hundred. Yeah, that's not bad. What? <laughs> that's not bad. I like Come my, on, bro. I like my two hundred and two seventeen. I get down here. That's. I only that's got two good. carry aggregation. So can you imagine if I got the Note ten down here in the keys? Wait, how are you getting? You're getting over two hundred megs on two carriers. Yes. Wow. How? I don't know. Is that is that two band sixty sixes? What is that? Probably. It's probably what it is. Two sixty sixes. Wow. Yeah. Holy yeah, crap. they just did massive upgrades down here. And the picture I got you showing is one of our towers down here in Alvarado. Wow, that's crazy. Uh so I wanna I'm gonna go ahead and put this up again. Here's <laughs> here's a situation like that that tower is loaded. That thing's got Multiple sets of antennas. This from is AT and T on the top, right? Band That's, two, right? Band five. That's what okay. those are. Down here, you got band two, band four, band sixty-six. Of course, you got the new capacity ones they put on, and you got band twelve on here, and you got band seventy-one that they are just putting on here now with the, the crane. Do you see the little sprint antennas? Look how cute they are up there. <laughs> there ain't no sprint antennas on this tower. Oh, not even at the top underneath those AT and no. uh, these top ones here. No, no, under the top ones. Here? No, no, up. Here. You see those? Those are you sprint antennas. The, these? No. Go up. These? Yes. These? No, here? go up. Up. Okay. Here, these? Right. Okay, now a little bit down. These? Yes. Yeah, those are those are sprint. Those, those are sprint. No, those are AT and T. What? Those are pointing north up the island, and these are pointing down. AT and T wow. only has coverage up and down the island. If you go out in your boat, you you lose out a little bit. You go. Oh. See here, wow. T Mobile has antennas pointing out toward mm -hmm. the ocean, so the boaters can have a signal. Yep. Okay. Huh? So there's no sprint on this site. No, there's no sprint on this site. No. <laughs> Wait. Wait, wait, wait. What, what bands on T-Mobile can they roam on? Well, Sprint has a tower down the street from here. So no roaming. Well, they don't need roaming because well, they got a tower down the street. Well, they can they can still roam off. Uh, Sprint still roams off T-Mobile. See, extended. each tower oh, yeah. has certain antennas for each carrier. Not every tower has every carrier. Right. So it just depends on depends on what they got here I, I can show you that too here i'll show you exactly where this tower is here too that's what i like about cell mapper this is really really great oh cell mapper yeah it's a good site it's only as good as the users if they oops i'm changing my page Let me zoom down. I'll show you where this tower is. It. 
we ever get there. Okay, this is already on sprint. Okay, that's the lower out. Let's see, let me go up here. Come on, let's go. Right here. Sometimes I don't like to move. Okay, here's where the sprint tower is. It's down here. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, if I switch this to T-Mobile, here's the tower right here that they I just got, showed you the picture of. They got that. See? Oh, they got all the bands. Two, we have four, two, four, four 12, 66, 71. And if you go to AT&T, Well, we go. Yeah, I was gonna say, is that gonna update? Is that gonna show the the bands they access over there? Yeah, should. Sometimes this thing gets a little messed up. Just do a, see, this got dropped. Do a I can I can slip down to, you know, just one band. To, oh, there it goes. Oh no, it's AT and T. Let me go back to. See, I try to tell people this all the time. People talk about band okay, here we 12, go. Two, four, band five, seventeen. Two. Right. Oh, see, they got they got more than just two and two and five. One. They also have four and seventeen. He's they a, had, yeah, but what I'm what I'm kind of confused about is why hasn't that received the band fourteen yet? Well, there's it's in progress. Yeah, there's, yeah, they're gonna be they're They said they're about sixty percent. I mean, here I done. can go down here and show you fourteen. Yeah, let's take a look. Right let's here. see what we got. That's gonna be the most recent. You know, network investment mm -hmm. that AT&T has made. What band? What band five block is AT&T using? Because I know Verizon's using is starting to use band five too. Band five was their previous uh, CDMA tech. Yeah. They were just doing that for like calling and texting. Yeah, but now a lot of they're decommissioning a lot of uh, at least yeah. here a lot of yeah, yeah. decommissioned around here. And it's here's been, band fourteen across the country. How could they have? How could that be sixty percent of what they're trying to achieve? That's I'll, I'll, I'll show you right here. I don't see any. Uh, Some of the license for Colorado is under AT and T. Now, right. watch this. I can go down here. You got nothing. There's in Colorado, actually license nothing in Utah. so they can get the extra capacity under FirstNet. Oh, let me just so type it in. That changes it. Okay, go ahead. Here's FirstNet. Now watch this. Hmm. That looks a little disappointing. Well, wow. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Wait, why? why? Oh, there we go. Okay. That's that's the that's, that's that's the first net part. Hey, that's some great service in Canada. That's the East Coast, but what about the West Coast? That's where the problem started was because of California. Well, the thing is... The West Coast doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. T-Mobile's deploying there. They're deploying Band 14... <laughs> Where they get the first cut, they're up to 9,800 subscribers. That's all they got on first net because 9,800. Yes, you, you oh, did you guys know this stuff? Because I because I have the first responders plan, you know, that they make you get on a separate plan. So let's say your line, you're the first, yeah, because that your your core management is different. Yeah, it's and, crazy how you have to pay a separate, you have to have two plans one for your family, one for yourself for first net. That's why T Mobile is different. I've, I've, yeah, Pete, this is this is legit. T Mobile. Gets oh, everybody on the same the, plan. Yeah. Listen, listen. T-Mobile has everybody on the same plan getting the same discount with their first responders plan. AT&T gives a certain pricing and plan for the first responder, and then they do something totally different for the rest of the family. I, like I, I think, like I get fifteen percent on on the family plan, and then I get fifty percent on the first responder plan. I think new T-Mobile for first responders are going to be doing something like that too, though. <laughs> Where the active responder pays zero and the family pays fifty percent, right? That's which is good. That's what, yeah. what, which is game changing. And we'll if California gets their firefighters that and it works over the state, they'd be saving hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Exactly, and their deficit that they're already in. <laughs> Bro, do you think? Do you think the judge is gonna listen to that and hear that though? Oh. Uh, they they yeah. should that that creates uh, firefighter positions, like, and they might able be able to pay the prison labor 
All right, what are we looking at here? What are we doing? It's just, I don't, I don't know, Pete. It's just like how it is here. Okay, like here in Nevada, we, you know, we just became recreational marijuana. Okay, so all oh, money, in Colorado, all Stay that money, off the weed, man. No, no talking but, about that. <laughs> but sorry, sorry, sorry about that. But this is like a point, kind of proven. Like basically, they, they said they were going to use all that money of those taxes for the school, everything, no matter every penny. And tell me why it's been two years long and nothing has been used for the schools. They had to raise the state taxes just to make money for the schools. So you Jeez. know the propaganda. In Colorado, we raise the uh, sin tax to pay for the schools, and it goes to school renovation and construction. I'll hear nothing, bro, even though that's what was promised to the voters. Man. That's what okay, I'm saying. I, and, I got and, something here and we for kind you. Of and we follow kind of what California does, you know? So think about it. You think California is really going to be on board? Like, they're going to try to fight this to the end. They're yeah, because Becerra is, is, you know, he's 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 riding with New York all day long. Exactly. They ride together. And then they're going to they're 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 get Nevada. The and then you'll see they'll get Nevada to flip, too. Because somehow we always somehow follow California in some way, somehow, which is stupid. But that's just how it goes. <laughs> Maverick, don't be a diabolical hater, bro. Come on now. <laughs> like I wish they I wish they would just go back to California and not be here. <laughs> For real, man. They're are they're starting to our second amendment rights are starting to get shaved a little bit here like over there. Oh man. It's horrible. Oh man. Yeah, you got a right to bear arms. That means you can wear short sleeves, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> You, you see, um, during the formation of the Bill of Rights, the idea of having uncovered arms <laughs> was a capital crime in some places in New England. Because <laughs> of uh, the Puritans wanting to uh, minimize uh, elbow yeah. Hey Pete, which which 5G phone do you want, Pete? <sighs> Samsung might be tempting, especially no 10. Yeah, especially since um Google is no longer doing the unlimited uh photo backup. What are you doing, Carlos? What are you going to get? Um, I was thinking about the OnePlus I'm thinking about the one plus two. I might I might go with one plus I already I already have the Note 10 plus 5G and it's honestly it's it's cool but too bloated. I might well, you got go a lot with, of stuff on there. Well it's yeah, a note. It comes with a lot of junk. I might go with the uh the one plus non McLaren if T Mobile gets it. That's the one to get, bro. Like a seven T five G, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't need a McLaren, bro. I don't I Nah, I mean, right, but you gotta say you got it, you know. Limited, limited nah, hardware, nah, right nah, now. Nah. <laughs> bruh, <laughs> bruh. We we don't have a corporation paying for our phones. Yeah, this yeah. gotta. I gotta yeah, pay. Yeah, no, man. It's, it's expensive. It gets expensive. So get me the Oxygen OS on the five G, and right. no extra special edition, and we'd be happy. Oh yeah. All right, so my goal was to be on here for an hour. We killed that. Hey, but, did I uh, get any uh, feedback in that time? Uh, what we could do is we can kind of open this up to a little bit of like. Yeah, I had one more thing to show you guys too. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. This is why the Sprint merger is going to be good when you merge the, the towers. Because showing you here, this just kind of shows you down here. This is T-Mobile. This is the tower sites. See how they're spaced. Green means good signal. Red and means, red those, means bad signal. So as you see, yeah, kind of T-Mobile has a dead spot sides. right here. Okay. Right. Now watch what happens when I switch this to Sprint. Oh, God. This is going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be like the mirror image. Okay. Oh, it, now, it, wait, now, when you merge. Are the same dead spot there? No, it's actually better because, see, there's a tower here. 
So there's so, some places that Sprint has antennas on towers in the same areas that T-Mobile may Band not. Throw 71 on that tower and they have no dead zone. So exactly. So basically by merging the two networks together, you're going to have you're going to have better coverage. And see when you go to AT&T, see how they're spaced out. And then of course when you go to Verizon, See how they're spaced out, and when what you go out in the rural areas, the team will work right there. Let's, let's go for a good rural area, Mississippi. Okay, entire Mississippi. state, according to uh, the internet's rural. Well, to the right, yeah, that looks like Mississippi. Mississippi. Okay, let's let's go in some tires. Well, some uh, here. Go to Olive Branch, Mississippi, bro. Yeah. Olive <laughs> Branch. You have to help me out. <laughs> I've never like, been there. Uh, it's it's right by Memphis. It's not. That's probably like right on the border. Oh, up it is by the border. Up by Meridian. That's right, buddy. I've been to Meridian. I drove up down through there from Louisiana up to Ohio before, so. All these markers on here, it's kind of hard to see, are they? All right. I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> just, just pan out. That's all you got to just pan out. Yeah, but it just makes it worse sometimes when you pan out. Oh, then pan in. <laughs> at least you could see a highway or something. You can kind of use that as a landmark. Where's this at? But yeah, as you can see, we need the merger so the Mississippi's not a dead zone. Well, anyways, this area here, of course, you see it's Verizon. So you got 13. Some areas only have just one band. So their speeds ain't going to be that good. They got one band. Are these only, does Verizon only get this service on the highways? <laughs> no, this this is Verizon in the rural areas. So now watch while I go to Sprint. Yes. Is this right, Sprint that deployed or Sprint uh, owned? This is Sprint Towers. Yeah, this see band twenty five. Look, um, look, look wow. at the big hole here. Oh god, 25, oh, god. 25. That's hideous. See there? That's now simply hideous. Switch to AT and T. See, right? There's a few. Yeah, yeah. Switch to T Mobile. Let's see where they got band seventy one. Oh wow! Yeah, oh, that's not bad. See? For Mississippi, yeah, it's, it's pretty good for all. Mississippi. What's up, George? Yeah. Good to have you on, man. You're gonna have to watch most of this. I'm gonna show you something else here too. Let's go to West Virginia. I want to show you something in West Virginia. I got some uh, decent service on 71 in West Virginia earlier this year. Yeah, they just okay. did a lot of upgrades in the last year or two. It was it was mainly near highways, but I didn't lose. Well, where would you start, Pete? There. The highway. Where would you start? Yeah. Well, wh just... what T-Mobile is doing right now in West Virginia, they got a roaming agreement with U.S. Cellular for LTE. And you can oh, see. Oh, they're giving them LTE. Okay. Yeah, you see here. Wow. See these these lines. Generous. This is roaming right here. This is roaming LTE. All these areas here. The pink. With the lines in it, the light color with the lines. It's kind of hard to it's see. It's really, yeah, it's really hard to see if it's got Let lines. Zoom, zoom so, in a little bit more here. So they're basically, yeah. depending on So that's roaming. Right now, what, what they're doing is T Mobile's going in, they're adding new tower sites in here to expand. So this is my neck of the woods. I used to live here in West Virginia, West Virginia, over here, West Union, when I worked in an oil field. I was out here back. When I was there, there was no T Mobile through here, it was only ro roaming. Well, they were probably roaming on uh, AT and T. Yep. Although yeah, where, the, where there's no see, much the, surface there. U.S. Cellular starts right here. This is all U.S. Cellular. From here over would have been roaming on AT and T. Now, one place that they did some add some towers over here is a little place called Weston. Whoops. Right here. Okay. Now, the beauty of T-Mobile when you zoom in, look, it actually shows you the signal strength. Oh, okay. So the, the the dark colors are indoor coverage, and the lighter covers eventually get you to car and outdoor. Now hey, this could this you, is uh, this is with band two. 
Now, yeah. when I click on this, now it's band 71. Could you go over to uh, Effort PA? Effort PA. E F F O R T. Okay, let's see, see what that's it. But, but Ricky, though, with a lot of these these coverage maps, man, I don't know. It's it's hard to believe what's on there just because, like I told you, I don't know if uh, you were on the Discord. People okay, are bad with updating the phones. It's you gotta help me out where that is. I, Type it in the of, search bar. All right. Hey, but but basically on there, it sa it says that between uh, the Arizona side and the Utah side, going to St. George, it says it has like that. It no effort. E F F. E F F O R T. Oh, just like effort. Yeah. Yeah, it's a city where that, they try really hard, bro. <laughs> is that no, where is that where Verizon's trying to launch <laughs> millimeter wave? No, no, I, no, I have no, some no. family there. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, they don't give a lot of it, but they live there. <laughs> uh, it's not even mother in law. Up, my where, sister's mother in law keeps complaining. Where's it near at? East Stroudsburg near the uh, Delaware so, Water so Gap. It's, so it's e east. Pete, I don't okay, think it's happening, bro. <laughs> it's uh, happening. <laughs> Pennsylvania's a big state. Yeah, it's massive. Here's Harrisburg. It's north of there. We're getting co cold or warm? Warmer. You know what the zip code <laughs> it's is? It's near I-80. Well, here's I-80 right here. Yeah. Little to the right. Strasburg is right here. Yeah, it's so they they're blanketed there. Their issues they don't have cell phones. So when you zoom in here, see when you get to a certain point, then it shows you what the. Oh yeah. Now I don't know what bands these are here off the top of my head, but doesn't matter. That's without band 71. And you need with, the 71. Yeah. Well, I've, I selected some certain areas to kind of show you guys what I was talking about here. Show it. Okay. Now, this is down by my house. Now, when I was in the grocery store, I'd get one bar when I was in there. And they would, they would launch 71. And then you can see the difference there. Well, wow, that's a big difference. So it really helps us down here. All right, and now, and of course, I showed this earlier in Maine. All right, that's band two, 1900 megahertz. All right, switch and over to the 71 it, right there. There's band 71. Big time, oh, wow. bro. That just shows you how much difference going from 600 megahertz to 1900 megahertz does, which is band two is like three times as high. Hey, Ricky. Uh oh, Verizon's calling you. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> no. Nope. Hey, Ricky, put on, put on their little field, Arizona. Call from. Now, here. This kind of shows you the difference between band 12 and band 71 because everybody says, okay, well, band, I don't have band 71. You know, I need band 71 to make my signal better. Well, if you already have band 12, it has good low band because it's 700 megahertz. So it's only band 6, 71 is only 100 megahertz lower because lower you go in frequency, the more range you get. Yep. So, but if you look very closely on the map, you can kind of see where the difference is. See, you got a little bit darker over here. And then the second color, the second color here, you can see it's a little bit more and like over here. So as you see, it's about 20% more coverage with band 71. That's it. All right. Now we're going to show you band 66, which is 2100 megahertz. Okay. This is out in Antigo, Wisconsin. It kind of shows you that. And then when you add band 71, you see how much better coverage you get. Now, here's another part of Wisconsin that shows you 
Wisconsin. Some Wisconsiners have been complaining about poor T-Mobile service in their area. All right. This gives you, this shows you here five sites. Okay, there's five towers here. I marked them on the map here. This is band 66, which is 2100 megahertz. It's basically band four and band six, uh, band four added with the extra spectrum, making it. I thought 66. that was 1900. It's 2100. 66 is 21. It's 1700 on the uplink and 2100 on the downlink. Ah, okay. So the, here's your here's your towers here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. All this area is roaming. Look at this roaming area. Okay, this is all roaming. By just That's all roaming LTE. Yes. Now by just wait. Put, so why so why would they just put band sixty six there? This is before. On oh, the right but, is after they turn band seventy on. On. They're still roaming though. That's significantly less roaming. It is, it is. But what I'm saying is, why wouldn't they densify their sites? I mean, it looks like they need about four or five more sites. Well, yeah, of course they do. But see, they're hitting the major cities in here. See, Team Able is expanding in areas that have roaming now. If there's roaming there, they're actually adding antennas on these new sites. Right. Plus, some sites are getting Band 71 put on it. And so when they add band 71 on it, you can see what it does. Look here. This is all roaming over here. This little town of server cliff. Look over here. I mean, it's not a really great signal, but at least you got some outdoor and car coverage now that you did before. So this, so, just shows, this shows you the difference. I got to I gotta say this right now before you even conclude with this, uh, Ricky. Mm -hmm. I'll let you finish in a second. Okay. The failed merger between T-Mobile and AT&T in 2011 is the single reason why T-Mobile took so long to roll out band 71. Like they had no, no required need to roll out a low band frequency uh, band because they had this roaming agreement with AT&T for so long. And very true in the last two years, they've had to completely like, like they had to expedite this build out of band seven one because they had to get off that roaming agreement. That's true. So that's why we're seeing in the last two years the outrageous pace that band seventy one is being rolled out. Well, they also just got access to nationwide uh, frequency, so well, it all smart. went hand in they're hand. Jumping they, on it. That's it went hand in hand. They bought six hundred megahertz when they knew their roaming agreement was going to be up. But you got to think about it though. For five towers in that town, that's not bad. That's man. crazy, that's bro. Pretty bad that's for really good. For you know what that would look like in Cleveland? You would probably need about nine towers to do that. <laughs> so you got to think about it. Ben Seventy One is actually doing really well. Yeah, it's yeah, a game changer, bro. It's now here huge. we're going to go to Ironwood, Michigan. Do they have good water there? I don't know. Never been there. Hopefully, it's not like Flint, bro. Now, this is a comparison of band 12 and band 71 on a 300 foot tower. See, that's another thing is it makes a big difference, too, is, is the tower height. If you got a monopole, it's only 150 foot versus something that's a uh, freestanding tower is 300 to 350 foot, it makes a big difference. Yeah, but Ricky, on the left, you're, at, you got, you're at the mercy of the city on that. True. But a lot of these towers are already out there. And so T Mobile is, is slowly adding on towers that they didn't have antennas on before well some of them are adding them to those power lines yep well Which, that too yeah and power the line towers lights. yeah but on the left here you got band 12 you can see here what the propagation is on that and then look at all this roaming areas around here see this is roaming over here roaming over here and then now when you get band 71 turned on at that height this is just one tower and you can see what it does Wow. The difference. It's Look at over here. Nice yeah. Here, there's no signal at all, not even roaming. And when they flip oh, the so switch, the the shade is is this showing is like all, network right. performance signal These or whatever. Very light colors here is roaming. That's see, it's a river valley, so that's yeah. why it's right. Hard to get a signal in there. Right. And then over here in this other little town, I'll show you this here. This is band. This is band two, 1900 megahertz. Here's the tower right here in the middle. So this kind of shows you see the roaming over here. Now, when they flip the switch on that tower to band 71, it gives you kind of a close up. It's like, boom, look at that. It really makes wow. a big difference. 
And then let's see. Oh, here's side by side for it. Kind of band two on the left, 1900 megahertz. Band 71, 600 megahertz on the right. And this is a 500 foot tower here. It's a very tall tower. That is crazy. I actually went on there, on here, and actually took a picture of where it's at too. Dude, I don't, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know you could have a 500 foot tower. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's different tower. There's a monopole. It's 150, like over at your school. Those are 150 foot mono, monopoles. Oh, have you seen that video? The speed with speed. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> that was quite the far, farm there. I, That's I. I, I thought it was kind of fun, man. But like, you, did you see how those those towers were configured on those light poles? Yeah, Bro, yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's literally six hundred feet from my classroom, and Sprint can't do anything but three G in the building. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, I'm pulling one hundred and sixty megs from Verizon, AT and T, and T Mobile, and I Out can't in get Arizona, Jacob Lake, Arizona. This is band two. Bro, where's the lake at? I don't see it. Yeah, I don't see the lake either. Bro, in the water. Where's the fish, bro? Arizona <laughs> doesn't have a lake. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I could think that they call this Jacob Lake is because probably somebody in the Indian tribe was called Jacob, and he loved lakes, so they named him Jacob Lake, and they named yeah. the town after him. So it definitely ain't because there's water over there. And then when you turn on <laughs> 71, this is what happens. Yeah, buddy. See there? Yep. It's just amazing. And then here is showing you the same thing. That this is the T-Mobile map that actually shows you what bands are and the strength. And I marked right where the tower is right here. And see, and this map is great because you can go on here anywhere in the United States. You click on it, it tells you what band and what the signal is. Outdoor, car, in your house, or out in a shopping center. I actually, building. I, I actually, I disagree with Greg A. Well, I don't disagree with him, actually. I want to amend this. Here's the tower even in Jacob Lake. Even in areas with band 12, I still think T-Mobile needs to do band 71. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's definitely not going to replace it. But like, you know, like Greg is saying, if an area doesn't have band 12, that's priority for band 71. And here's a monopole. Just I can't believe me. there's 500 no, foot towers. What the heck, bro? Where do they do that? This is a monopole, that's so crazy. it's kind of a shorter tower. There's some towers out there a thousand foot, but of course what? you usually don't have cell towers Where? that high up because if Where you put a at? cell tower, <laughs> cell, the antenna is up too high. What happens is the signal goes farther and they reuse these frequencies. They don't use right. one frequency for the whole United States. So like if the frequency has a range of two miles, they won't reuse that frequency again on that sector pointing the same side of as another sector for like another 30 miles. Because when you get temperature inversions and all this kind of stuff, it actually can make the signals go farther. And when they start colliding with towers, it'll actually kill the whole network. And that's what the danger is on 600, 700 megahertz when you get these tropical inversion temperature things. Also, if you're using millimeter wave and you put it 1,000 feet up, you'll have no service on street level. Wait, why mm -hmm. would you want to waste the energy? <laughs> why would you even run power to it? Seriously. Hey, here's a here's a 350-foot tower here with that tunnels on it. Band 71's on here. See it? So you know what that I want to see happen? Is band 71 right there. You know what I want to see happen, Ricky? I want to see the application of some beam forming technologies with band 71. And, uh, you know, like when you think about like how we're going to get the signal transmitted to certain places, do you see that happening in the near future where they can actually target certain dead spots, you know, having antenna rays in a certain way? It is possible. And the only one that's using it right now is Sprint band 41 with their massive mimo mm -hmm. but the mid band is where that's going to be more efficient at low band is you don't really need beam forming for low band because it already is pretty it doesn't have much signal flutter as you're moving around more than mil, the mid band does so, so i see mid, the 2.5 being a focus on that right yeah band 41 2500 yes and then when band 48 comes out that's going to be very popular band 48 is going to be it's going to be good. It's going to have lots of bandwidth. They're going to use massive MIMO with the beam forming. And it's going to make some really low latencies and really, really super fast speeds. So 5G is just only going to get better over time. I can't wait to get it's arms get, growing out of my head. It's going to, yeah. Hey, you know my birthday is on December 7th. We're going to do a podcast. We're going to go live. I'm going to be wearing aluminum tinfoil wow. hats, bro. So, so it's going to be the day after... 
5G comes out is your birthday. Yep. The, the Alex Jones. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Carlos, <laughs> can we can you get a phone for his birthday? We we can make something happen. We can make something happen. <laughs> Hey, uh, and then here, now, I put the 5G map up here again. This, this is what T-Mobile put, put out for 5G. So, And I tell you, I get 5G on that map. Wow. Yeah. It looks it looks like a lot, many parts of I-80 on the East Coast are going to get it. There's a lot of band. 71 5G is going to be coming out. So, And, and you got to remember, wherever there's 5G for band 71, you're also going to have a couple hundred megahertz or megabits per second of LTE to go with it and boost it. So when you blend them together, I would say we're going to see speeds of 300 to 500 easy. Bring it on. Let's bring those speeds. You know, like, to be honest with you, I don't know about all the speeds and all that. It's just not my priority, but I want to see the application of the low latency become something that we can take advantage of. And I also want to see a situation where, T-Mobile's home internet becomes widely available throughout the nation where places that are underserved and right. home internet op options are limited and they overcharge and they've got satellite options. Like all that's all that's done. You know I'd what I mean? I'd also like to see yeah. some layer three roll out. I, yeah. The T vision. I want to see mm -hmm. that stuff. Ha I don't like when people say, you know, we, we got to keep sprint. Like those things can happen if the merger pans out, you know, as planned and, so Sprint's going to be the, you know, the, they're the sacrifice in all of this, but Sprint's failed us. And it's been like this for many years. So I've already moved on, you know, that, you know, Sprint's not this national carrier anymore and they're not able to compete and they've got all this debt. I just, I want to see T-Mobile offer those options. Like it's, it's just more important to me as a consumer that they disrupt other markets and offer something to people. And another yeah. nice thing that's going to be is and what else? hopefully that they get rid of the day the throttle limits of the video too bro that that's, that's only gonna that. get better over time i can't exactly. i can't understand why i'm like on the on the best plan verizon has they'll give you 720p only 720p that means they're giving you like two megs per second to video and you can't enough. give people four you can't give people five megs per second on video seriously so they can get 1080p we get 1080p on T-Mobile, and the most obnoxious thing is changing the drop-down thing periodically. No, Pete, it's starting to. I'm starting to buffer, bro. It's pissing me off. Yeah. Oh man. We are buffering. That's what I'm saying. Is I I want all of that to change. I want a market correction. I want the TV market to have to adjust. I want the home yep. internet to adjust. I want the video resolution to change. I want the removal of the soft cap. I want a lot of that stuff to change, and it's. You know, T-Mobile's yeah, been an better. agent of change. You know, that's that's where I'm at. The last thing I throwed up here is one site that got turned on with 71, and somebody has Cell Mapper in their phone and did a lot of driving around, as you see. And look how much range this thing has on this one tower site. On, I mean, look look how far away. This is like three, four miles out. It's actually still picking up signal. Well, here here's how you know how good band uh, band 71 is. AT&T is with N5, 850 megahertz. They're getting two-mile propagation. 71, two mile. best conditions. You're looking around three and a half. So yeah. you, get my, you get what I'm saying? So it's its application is extensive. Yes. It's going to get good. All right. Yeah, this is awesome. Um Ricky, thanks for coming on and sharing these items with us, giving us the breakdown and kind of giving us a visual representation of what's going on with the networks. Uh, I know we did it like, you know, regional and, and city by city. We did some national looks. Uh, you know, like when I, I, I sit here and I'm, you know, I, I assess the, the mobile landscape with the carriers. And I, I say time and time again, T-Mobile seems to be the one network that I get excited about because of what they're doing. And they don't pay me. I haven't ever received a dime from T-Mobile, but they're the one carrier that I think, like you can root for the underdog. That's that covers them. Yeah, you know you can root for the company that seems to be wanting to do things, uh, for for markets where they can disrupt, and they just have a totally different approach to customer care. Like there's so many good things about them, right? And 
I, I don't see this with AT&T and I don't Verizon. I don't, I know what their plan is. They're going with millimeter wave and all these different markets. I don't get excited about it. It doesn't do anything for me. And honestly, because it doesn't affect people outside of the three minutes that they spend in a stadium where they can get connected if they're standing close enough to the node. Which means I, they're I can't in the... Promote... Which means not only do they need to add $10 to their uh, $80 plan, they also need $10,000 seats. I can't promote what Verizon is doing, and at and on to something. I'm actually more interested about at and next move. Their current move with, with, with what they're doing with low band is it's it's not like they're just it's the phones are too expensive, right? It's hard to, to justify it. But I think T Mobile's gonna probably by the end of 2020 offer something low, low range, you know, like something seven, eight hundred dollars because they, they they've been talking about how Metro is gonna have 5G. So if you're gonna have Metro by T Mobile with 5G, you've got to get them entry level phones. Like Samsung $400 is coming phones. out in February with a Samsung phone with 5G. A low is it the A20 or the A50 or something? Yeah, one of them. Yeah. I don't know exactly what mo its model yet. It's but, the A50. But there will be one coming out. This is going to help out everybody to get on board with 5G. They'll have the right. X55 modem in it. Is it going to come in at like six, 700 bucks? Yeah, I would say about five. That's where four, we got to see it. Four or uh, 500 bucks. Five yeah, would be... be reasonable it's got to be an l like if it was an lt model it's gonna have to be like a 200 dollars phone and if it's a 5g yeah, model well, we're expecting an extra you know yeah 5g is gonna be kind of hard to get down to 200 dollars. so well it's no gonna, i'm saying gonna, like lt only if it's if it's if the lt yeah. variation of it's 200 then we can expect 500 as a 5g model i don't know if you want to if you want to share any of these sites Oh yeah, these are all public sites. I just do a lot of research. I'm a I'm a curious George type and a, a techie guy, so I spend a lot of time just going. And that that's why I'm knowledgeable about it. You know, all this stuff is public information. So I'll I'll post every one of these links on here. People can come go on there and explore and search and explore and just have a great time. See what's going on. And of course, the T-Mobile map is is easy. It's on their website, the T-Mobile map. And Root Matrix, I'll put that up here in case anybody wants to check it out. What's nice about it, it just shows you the data for call performance, fastest speed, best technology found. So, because if you click that and zoom in, you can see, see you go to Sprint. See, the orange, it's 2G, 3G. Look at all this 2G, 3G that Sprint has. Yeah. So, you know, I, and then you see times I tell people, switch over to T-Mobile and look, T-Mobile still has a lot of three. And then of course, when you switch to AT and T, they've been in the game longer. Of course, they're going to have that, but they still of got course, a lot of right. And then you switch over to Verizon, and look at there, they still have some three G. Well, won't be for okay. long because it's getting shut off next month. The end yeah, of life much. on three G for Verizon is over. January yeah, 1st completely. is gone. Yeah. They're going right. to start refarming that for 5G. Which is... Yeah, but what what's crazy is, is they don't have a lot of spectrum assets allocated to 3G, though. Right, they just have their... It's not going to be a difference maker. Band 66, maker. band 13. They have to use dynamic spectrum sharing. They have to. I'm telling you, bro, they're getting in on C-band in a big way. There's no oh, other way. Oh, they have way. to. There's they no have to I don't care what they say. They have yeah, to. Yeah, there's no way. I think they prompted the C-band auction. Yeah, they they were begging. Uh, yeah, what's what's his face, idiot? To that to guy get it up from Kansas that up belongs in Pakistan. What's what's his name? Pi Pi Ajit Pi. Yeah, I, I knew. We, Carlos, could you find me a Reese's mug bigger than his? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen that picture, hey. Carlos? Which one? The one of Ajit Pai with the Reese's cup coffee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, uh, that was crazy. Hey, I'm I'm gonna share I'm gonna share this right here about the five G phone that you're talking about right here. Hold on, let's see here. Let's see if it'll let me do it. Chrome, share. There we go. There we go. You guys see that? Um, add it right there. You see the Samsung Galaxy A95G. That's the one that's going to be the entry-level phone. 
Wait, so that is a phone that is already in production? That it's going to be out for the entry level 5G, yes. All right, do we have any information on the phone in terms of specifications, pricing, carriers, low band, mid band, millimeter wave? Let's look this up right here. Because that's kind of what we need to know. Like, if we're going to be informing consumers, which carriers are going to support it? What's going to be the cost on the device? P90 you know, is a mid, mid entry level, right? It's a range right here. Here we go. Let's see. Let's pop up the A9. Oh, that's the one that's going to be launched in the UK. A90, A55 processor. The 5G device. Let's see here. Six. You know, internationally, Carlos, they're focusing on mid-band. Yeah, they got a lot of mid-band yeah. over there. Because they don't have the problem we have here in the U.S., which is where we have coast-to-coast, -coast, you know, huge, massive footprint. You know, you just... You don't have the same problems in a in a place like, like Japan or in a place like uh, Korea where they have, you know, it's a smaller country. They they can go completely mid band and they're good. They don't have to do low band five G. They really don't. Exactly. We're in a position where low band five G is a requirement. But it's it's going to be somewhere around there. A ninety. Some you know it could be even though it's coming out in Europe first, it could be coming here next. You know, you never know. They'll never get the U.S. to buy in within two years unless they come in at a better entry-level device. Like We're going to have to have two or three devices on at least two carriers, AT&T and T-Mobile, and they got to be under seven, 700 bucks. They got to be at six, you know, 500. They just, they can't, they can't target 10% of the population willing to buy for over a thousand. Well, they have to be if they're going to be offering it for Metro PCS because you know yeah, they're not going to right. spend a thousand dollars on a phone. I would argue, Carlos, that they probably can't even sell a seven hundred dollar phone on Metro. That would be insane. They're not going to sell. Yeah. Now, who's going to buy it, bro? The anybody who's on Metro is making an active budget decision, or just simply refuses to pay flagship level pricing. Well, you know the Metro PCS is down here, crickets and all that. They have a, a firm mm -hmm. leasing. They have progressive leasing for financing the phones. Alternative that well, all you need is just a checking account. Yeah, and how much are those phones? Same price, but you're uh, but after you add the financing fee, let's say if you pay within ninety days, it's the same as cash. If you stretch it through the whole year, you're going to be paying that. Let's say seven hundred is going to be fourteen hundred. With the okay, so Carlos, I can go to a cricket and finance a, a Note 10 plus 5G? Yeah, you actually can on progressive leasing. Oh, man. Some of these MVNOs are starting to do that, but of course you have to have good credit. I don't no, like not progressive, not with, not with progressive leasing. Now with progressive leasing, you don't need no credit. You just need a checking account that's been active for more than six months. Yeah, but you, you, said, you said 90 days paid. That means it's three payments. Yeah, if you pay it off within 90 days, you Yikes. get zero. Like, they don't charge you any interest or anything. But if you pay, if you take the whole year to pay it, then that $700 phone just became like $1,400, $1,500. That is absurd. Wait, that's but, legal? Yeah, it's that's called leasing. Yeah, look bro, that's that's legit like 50%. Yeah, yeah that, basically, that should go against some usury laws. But wow, it's legal. I mean, I, I'll, I'll send you some pictures of. I'll go into a metro store and you'll see it. They they advertise it I, everywhere. I believe you that it's legal. My comment yeah, we're is, just, <laughs> yeah, we're not happy about that. That shouldn't be oh, legal. Yeah. They shouldn't. No, that's a lot. Think about it. You're just paying double. Wow. But that's just the way they are. It's for people that can't have credit. They're, that's they're giving forty five percent interest a month. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, look what people are paying yeah. for cars. Yeah, you get a thirty thousand dollar car, and when you get done paying for it, it's seventy thousand. AP, AP banks I'm are getting you. rich off of our <laughs> hardworking people. But see, it's easier to repossess a car than a phone. <laughs> if, yeah, if you don't exactly. pay for your phone, you rock off with it. It's a loss for the seller company. It's actually a loss for progressive leasing because if you, let's say, well, let's true. say. In Two months. Let's say in two months you say, "Hey, I don't want to pay for this phone no more." All you got to do is just turn it in to any place that accepts uh, progressive leasing returns, and that's it. And then you're done. You don't have to pay for it no more. It doesn't hurt you or anything. And if you stop paying for it, the worst thing they do is ding your checking account for the whole amount. 
And if you have it, it comes out. If you don't have it, your account goes negative for the thousand whatever. Dang. Ooh. Dang. So either way, they're getting their money. <laughs> so you gotta cancel your checking account. <laughs> if you if you're into that type of stuff, then yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, but it's crazy. I mean, there's, op there's options, but it's a so, person with what to do it. Colorado recently changed our usury laws. You can no longer charge over 25% interest on any service. Hmm. Well, that's, I don't know. That's That sounds customer friendly to me, consumer friendly. So we probably don't have progressive leasing in this state. I, I don't think it might be capped at that percentage, Pete, whatever it is. But, but they have another one called two. Let's see here. What is it called? They have like several different options. They have a firm and then they have uh, this one right here because I've used them before just to test it out and see what it was about. Oh, what is the name of it? This one right there. I've used them before. Pete, what device are you using right now? Like, what's your what's your main driver? Are you still on the Pixel 3? Yep. Pixel 4 just couldn't sell me for two of them. Uh, Ricky, what are you using? Motorola E5 Plus. Okay, so Moto. On Metro. It's All an right, awesome Carlos. phone for entry-level phone. Awesome. It is. I, I've always been a big fan. Carlos, with go ahead, bro. You got a portfolio, I think. <laughs> uh, iPhone. I, I use the iPhone for business. I use my Note 10 Plus 5G for personal. I have, uh, but then I've got an S10 Plus, so I I'm familiar with the Note Note experience probably. Oh yeah, the phone is nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's the price does kill people. Thirteen hundred dollars. That's a lot. A so doozy, how did you bro. get that phone before launch? The 5G. No, no I, he didn't get it before lunch. It's been on Verizon for a long time. Oh, you got the Ver no Verizon one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's all, it's on lock, though. Yeah, once you got it on for 60 days, you're good to go. That you can, they'll, they'll Actually, unlock it. Yeah, but he can unlock it, it and use it on T-Mobile's millimeter wave, but not low band. It right. it. But you he's nowhere near the, the, He's nowhere near T-Mobile's millimeter wave. Yeah, here in Vegas. Yeah, we. They do. got it in Vegas. They got it in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. They have it in New York. They have it in Atlanta. And um, that's the only bad thing about the Verizon version is it's limited. The the thing is, with it Verizon, doesn't have the Verizon, sub sub six license in the, it. Ver, the Verizon lock policy works different. It's, it it doesn't unlock by itself after sixty days. You you have request to call it. it. Yeah. 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 But you can unlock it to do stuff, but if it doesn't have the antennas in it for sub six, yeah, for, for of course. 5G, and that's you know, the, the bad there's, thing another about gimmick, it. there's another gimmick to the unlock policy, too. Let's say you have it active and you became past due. For oh, a yeah, month, the blacklist, it, it, it starts over again the 60 days. Oh, oh my god, bro! Wow, wow. yeah, big red. You don't action. understand, like, <laughs> like, I did it, I think I did a history video on this back in but, the day when they he, first. But, they first the changed their the policy. Same, no, 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 no. Hold on. Here's here's why this is different. T-Mobile never had an agreement with the FCC to have all their phones unlocked like Verizon did. Of course. So Verizon had an agreement for some C-block spectrum, and the FCC said, you can do this, but you can't lock your phones. And now they're like, okay, FCC, we don't care. We're going to start a different lock policy because we're having quote-unquote theft yep. problems. Right, it's, that was their excuse. Theft. It's, it's because is it uh, theft? A been, <laughs> no, a lot of people out here in Vegas, especially, they've been robbing the they've been robbing the stores. Like they're going late at oh, night. Oh yeah. That's like, before closing, they'll rob them because they know that the phones are unlocked. But you don't need can, a lock policy to them. lock phones once they've been stolen. Well, you yeah, you've already whitelisted the MEI. IMEI. You've already whitelisted it. You can just well, it's on a list. It. Yeah, you, you know, can blew my mind. It. Somebody broke into a, t a Sprint store in Miami, stole a bunch of iPhones. I'm thinking, why the heck would you go to a Sprint store and <laughs> steal iPhones? So we could sell you them know for that. Sprint. <laughs> no, no, no. Sprint Sprint phones are the lowest valued phones on the open market. Yep. Um. Uh, I could I could disagree on that on that one because I'm in the phone market and oh, you're in the black market. Pretty, 
<laughs> well, not in the black no, market. No, we're talking I, second-hand I him, market. Buy, oh, yeah, second-hand, yes. But if you buy it like me, I buy them and sell them. And Sweet. They actually, I sell, when I sell them to Dubai, they actually, they're actually they pretty high. Nobody touches they're them pretty, here. They're, they're, they're pretty they're pretty high up there in value because they're easier to unlock than that, an how that's Zero. crazy i don't know something must have happened over there but it, like they over here LTE. over here the uh the sprint phones if it's locked to sprint a lot of dealers and stuff they won't take on those phones well here's the thing <laughs> too if the phone is stolen it's blacklisted right but all you have to do is root the phone and then you make up its own new IMEI and bang you're back in business i've done right, that Oh yeah, Pete's yeah. done that. Or, or there's a I think there's a site. It's uh, what is it called? Freak. Um, this was on a. a you, that doesn't work on AT and T phones, by the way. This was on a phone that was reported stolen that somebody got from a reseller, and he had a receipt. So I'm like, okay, I'll just get rid of this problem. There you go. He, he legitimately <laughs> got the phone, but the original owner reported it stolen. Yes, oh, man, agree, bro. and there's a lot of insurance fraud doing that too. They they say it's stolen or whatever, and then they get a new phone. Yeah, because the insurance company will send you an unlocked one. Yep. So sure. that's what I encounter problems like that with Apple laptops all the time that become iCloud locked. Mm hmm. Yeah. Apple... Luckily, I can plug in a USB drive and unlock it. Yep. Uh, I think but, that's why these carriers want to go to eSIM because that's going to be a harder thing. It's going to be more encrypted. It's going to be harder to, to crack that. Yes, but we need all the carriers to adapt. Well, I mean, all of them adapt this for one, of course, fortunately. <laughs> well, you also need beyond first owner friendly policies. That if a customer like bought a phone from a second hand shop legitimately, they can't be locked out of the device because the original owner said, or another owner said, Hey, this was stolen. See, which happens more than you'd think. Like on the like on this iPhone, I have the dual, the eSIM. And it's just a pain if I want to switch. Like I have T-Mobile, oh yeah, eSIM, Verizon as the primary SIM, and it's just a pain to have to go into the setting every time if you want to change it up to test. You know, the, let's say you want to do speed test or you want to do some. It's just a pain. It's better just to carry an extra phone. At the end of the day. Yeah, I could see the application for having eSIM and regular SIM and you know traveling and oh, whatever. The only thing that's good is on. On the calling is you can switch it from here. You can just all you gotta do is click prime, click on the primary part, and it'll tell you which number you want to call. Yeah, you can allocate home. it right. I will say this yeah. though, Carlos, you got to be careful. There are some countries that don't take nicely to people bringing over a bunch of phones. So, like, say if you travel with two phones, customs there will ask you why you have two phones. Oh yes, yes. I have one so, for business, like, one for pleasure, and they will start asking you about your business and your pleasure. Which you <laughs> probably more willing to talk about your pleasure than your business. <laughs> Hold up, let me dial up my supervisor at DHS. <laughs> but I, I, you know, I've, yeah, right. I'm on band 66 right here, T Mobile inside the house. So two bars, but band 66. Hey, on LTE, two bars don't knock it. Yeah, of course not. It still works. So, in my, like in my experience, the bars don't. In my experience, the bars don't matter when it comes to T-Mobile speeds. It's not like you're on two G, where if you have two bars, you start making a phone call and they hear every fifteenth word. Oh, like Man, you spread? got some congestion over yeah, there, Yeah, like bro. on the spread. <laughs> a lot of congestion. Yeah, can you hear me now? You got congestion. You if you band sixty six, should be flying over there. No. Nope. T-Mobile is really congested out here. Look Their at that upload. Good. That's crazy. <laughs> I love that upload. It's four times faster than you're down. Yeah. <laughs> that happens tells, a lot. The congestion's bad, bro. Yep. Congestion's bad out here. That's Some why. people are on T-Mobile right you now. You know, if you were on Metro, Carlos, if you had a Metro SIM provision, you'd be under a, under a megabit per second. Yep. Exactly. Because that's a that's a postpaid line, right? 
Yes. He gets a good price for his postpaid, so why wouldn't it? Let's see here. Sweet. And then this one right here. This is Vegas testing, by the way, guys. Is that hey, Sprint? That looks Carlos. like it's two mobile upload. Carlos, that's Sprint? Yes. Fortunately, yeah. But no, that's how you know it is. Oh, the upload yeah. is a nightmare. Yep. They made a big mistake in how they do their upload, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's that's five megabits per second is usable. When you go closer towards the strip, that's when it gets better. But other than that, yeah, because network, uh, you know, has more access points. You probably got tons of towers everywhere. But with this, with this Note 10 5G, though, the with the carrier aggregation on it and stuff, it's you have no good. millimeter wave, though. No, but for the LTE, because you're in a garage. No, I'm inside my house right now. Oh, you moved. Yeah, I moved. That's <laughs> that's and you know what? That speed right there, that's like the slowest speeds that we have in, in Cleveland. That's the slowest you'll ever see from Verizon in Cleveland. Usually it's between like eighty and one hundred and fifty megabits per second. There's some small cells where there's moments you'll pull over two hundred megabits per second on download. But you're gonna and then be some parked of the over it. But that's no, no, happen. it's they got like if I was gonna recommend a carrier in Cleveland, I could recommend either AT and T or Verizon or actually T Mobile is really fast here too. I all three of them work well here. I just can't recommend Sprint for now. I, uh, in Colorado, I can't recommend AT and T or Sprint. So and that's AT and T right there. AT and T's killing it, bro. Like I've been using their network for a couple weeks now. It's crazy. I'm on a prepaid ca uh, carrier too, and it's bananas. It's nuts. Like it's constantly like 180 megabits per second. Like stuff like that is all day. It doesn't even matter the time of the day. Like peak times, it's still over 100 megabits. It's crazy. Do you get throttled on your video? Yeah. Uh yeah, it's like two megabits per second on video, two or two and a half. 161 and 20. They all do it, Pete. Every carrier throttles video aggressively. Verizon does it. T-Mobile yes. has been doing it. Hey, AT &T 5G. Does it. If we can get 5G with no video throttling, then people would adapt. It doesn't even have to be like a permanent non-throttle. Like They could just, at, at times of network congestion, just put that in air quotes. You know, we, we bring it down to 4K, you know? You get like 8K. 10 megabits per second. Yeah. You get 8K by default, but if we're congested, you get four. Like with, uh, what is it with Verizon? You get like four, four, four and a half upload on the video, something like that? No, they do not give you that. No. Or who who, do, who does around four? I think it's, who is it, at and T, right? Usually at and T will give you that, yeah. Yeah, so <coughs> normal, I know is around. Only, like only on their elite, though. Two. Yeah. But yeah. what T-Mobile does, I've noticed it. I've tracked it. They give you these little surges. Yeah. It kind of lets you boost up, you know, so it gets you ahead in video. So it, it they make the experience. They try to keep it from buffering so you don't, you know, get pissed off and whatnot. But I, they do, I a do a pretty get a good job on. unless con congested. Like right now here, I get a lot of, but we get a lot of buffering out here in Vegas for the, in the outskirts. And if you're closer towards the strip, you're fine. But if you're in the anywhere in the town, you get a lot of buffering right now. It's been a lot of congestion out here. That's why we need this damn merger already. <laughs> yeah, we yep. need we need that legit network access, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Sprint's not doing nothing with that spectrum. Might as well give it to somebody that will. Because if you think about it right now, the only way you're doing anything full definition, you know, high definition, high res video, you got to bypass with a VPN. Yeah, that's really you your only hope. option. And you better hope that the VP that your VPN can you know will allow it too because there's some VPN services that won't. Bingo, some like VPN. that Verizon one, bro. Plus. I can't. How mm -hmm. do, how does Verizon have their own VPN? Like, how are they gonna allow you to bypass that's, their throttle? That doesn't that's make a sense. Fox Guard in the hen house. 
Yeah, bro. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. No, it doesn't. But Plus, that's, that's... a VPN slows down your data speed as well. Big yeah. time, Because it bro. does so I've many seen... hops and bounces and makes well, your ping go up the roof. Servers and all that. Yeah. Yep. Man. There's a reason why they can't find it is because like, it just goes like all over the place. This is a video right now that I put on, on YouTube on T-Mobile. 1080p look. It's buffering already. Okay. <laughs> Well, you get yeah, four man. megs down in your house by default, so. So it's already, you see, it's already buffered, and I have the Magenta Plus, the the one that's supposed to give me high definition video, and I have the high definition turned on and everything. See, it's yeah, I, buffered. Yeah. But not three or four megabits per second is that going to work? L nope. Even at seven twenty, I'll put it. I'll you put need it at down least at 720. five to six megabits per second for ten eighty. And that's at least, and that's at seven twenty, and this is seven twenty right here. And, it's and that's buffing. which carrier? T-Mobile. T-Mobile. Yeah, man. That's what I've been seeing. 2160 see, video, man. you need at least 13 see, like, megabits per second you, now. Just so you see right there. Set, it's on 720p. Now, Good night, Jamil. Thanks for being here tonight, bro. Look. Thank you. Let's see. Once I knock it down, 480. Let's see. See, 480, it starts playing. It's still hiccuping. Yep. That's what's got to change, man. Let's see if I, I have pull ups in 1080p Sneed on my two mobile. <laughs> and then this I is can't copyright I'll... myself, can I? That's <laughs> why. Will I will you like... Sneed? Well, you're Am gonna, I going to copyright gonna sue... strike myself here? You're going you're gonna to sue yourself. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not a diabolical hater, bro. <laughs> Hey, uh, Sneed, when, when you get the, the SIMs, you need to let me know the IMEI of the phone you're going to be using that Sprint SIM card on because I got to call them and let them know the IMEI. Oh, yeah. Do I have to do that before I insert the SIM? Yep. Yes. I, I need, and it's and it's for, I don't know if you have iPhone or not. If you don't, then I'll send you an iPhone. because I don't iPhone. know if this is playing or buffering. I have an iPhone 7. I'm sorry. Yeah, it'll work. Well, okay. I mean, this it'll is... work, but you're not going to get the best of it. I'll, I'll send you a phone iPhone seven's behind the times. Got ten. Yeah, but I mean, it's just been a phone that I've got laying around. But are you? I'll tell you what, me? it's better than most people. Nope. It's better than most people's iPhones that have sixty-four gigs of storage. I've got two fifty-six in it. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't play games, bro. Bro, well, that that was the best you could get at the time. Yeah. At the time, yeah. The iPhone seven was the first iPhone with two fifty-six. Bro, who is that handsome, studly gentleman right there? Uh -oh. I don't know, man. Buff Copyright Buff infringement. Buff yeah, Buff with all of his bearded Buff glory. Buff Look at him with his bearded glory. <laughs> let's let's see 720p buffer. Let's see right there, Sneed. That's bro, that the guy new... think that guy thinks he knows everything, bro. Get him off of there. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You gotta go with the 512. That's impressive, yeah. Carlos. We need 512s, man. 512 bro they didn't have 512 back in 2017 bro chill <laughs> no, out i know no i know they didn't man 2016 whatever that was four years ago yeah about six at the yeah it was 16 yeah uh, come on carlito give me a little bit of credit for getting the highest storage at the time hey hey that's that's right exactly that's <laughs> balling right there bro when i met my wife she had a 16 gig iphone i said that's enough of that nonsense took it traded in got her the new one oh God, and got 16. her at the time i think it was 64 or 128 were the bigger options that's the one thing i hate about my motorola e5 plus it's got 32 oh gigs no bro puerto and... rican group thought i was for real about the handsome thing i'm sorry bro i was just playing man i'm, I'm not handsome i'm hideous bro <laughs> <laughs> uh oh he, he looks so style style and he's turned off the video <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna do duck face. Maybe they'll like me better if I do duck face. Hey bro, if you guys if you guys ever need one of these too, man, I can I get a hold of these too. Uh oh. The, the Samsung fridges. Yeah, bro, you're, you're gonna, gonna ship me a Samsung fridge, bro. You're gonna install what? that in the house too. Nah, I can install <laughs> it. So what do you do, Carlos? Watch porn on your refrigerator? Uh, <laughs> that's, a yeah, hey, that's a good idea, right? <laughs> bro, I'm about to get demonetized. Bro. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm about to get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the wife. I don't think the wife would. Be I don't think too YouTube police are watching. Nah, <laughs> they're nah. watching. <laughs> they're like ninjas, bruh. 
Let's see here. I'm gonna... We got people trying to donate some. Come on now. What's going on in the live? Hey, Dan Malone, have a good night, bro. Thanks for stopping by tonight. So I wouldn't mind a smart fridge for a reasonable price. I want to see how secure they are. What are they no. using? What's their protocol? It's Android. Oh, it's running uh, oh, wow. Android OS. Okay. That that doesn't yeah. mean anything. It could Hi. be media tech. Yeah, but that means that it's getting updates, right? Unless it's yeah, media it tech. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. How the hell do you... Man, my wife is the one that knows how to use this shit. Bro, how you got a $7,000 fridge, bro? Wait, yeah. let See? me let me find out there's like a loaf of bread in there and, and some Carlos, jelly. are you hiring? I need to make <laughs> some money. <laughs> See right there? It has internet. It has a... Uh, what is, oh what is this? Pandora? Carlos, you're going to have to send me a message on Discord how much that cost. Uh... What size screen uh, is that? It, is that like a twenty-inch screen? Twenty-five hundred. It's it's a. Uh, I'm know gonna what have size to talk is. to my department about that, that one. That looks like a twenty-inch screen. Yeah. Where that at least, is. bro? If you're going diagonal, yeah. Um, I can't yeah, pay that much for a fridge. Well, it's half as tall as he is, so. <laughs> oh, that thing is. is. That's right. It's it's not running Android. It's running the the Tizen that then, Samsung. No, we're not. We're not empty, man. We're not empty. I'm just, bro. You know, I'm playing. <laughs> we're <messing bro>. <laughs> you, you don't. We're we don't. We don't we struggle with malnutrition, huh? No, we have to eat, man. Oh, here we go. Tune in radio. There we go. Gotta eat I good. Gotta play some NPR. Oh my god. Like, look, it has even a speaker, bro, and this plays. No, 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 cut it, cut it. <laughs> but hey, Google, give me a beer. But it has where you can play music, <laughs> and stuff like that. All right, so my my goal was to be on for one hour. Um, we're that at two and happen. a half. Yeah, we're at two and a half. So, I, but I actually I got to get going. So let me do some thank yous and let me wrap things up here on this on the show. So first, I want to thank Pete because Pete's always here. It's Second, Sunday. I want to thank Ricky, <laughs> Ricky for coming on, sharing his maps, doing some of the comparisons and, you know, some of the analysis of where certain, you know, coverages are from each of the carriers in different cities across the nation, regional, statewide. Uh, we appreciate you, Ricky, for doing that for us. Thank you for coming my on. My pleasure. And I'm uh, looking forward to getting on the YouTube bandwagon good. myself with my new channel. So thank you for the knowledge, Ricky. That's yeah. Some good stuff, man. Rick, Ricky's going to be building his his channel in the near future. So big shout out to Ricky Florida keys tech Q and a, that's going to be the name of the channel. So I check it out. It's right there. Right now. Well, it won't in a minute because people <laughs> are going to jump on. And of course, when you're ready to start producing content, you gotta drop a link in the chat, Ricky. Uh, yeah. I'll yeah, be blast got you, bro. I'll be blasting you in the community tab. And okay. Carlos, I want to thank you for coming on. Um, you know, you've kind of become a contributor here in the channel and we're glad to have you as well. And, uh, thank you know, you, and, and thank all, thank you guys again for being on. I should probably thank all my moderators. I did see Jamil yep. momentarily. I saw Rafi was here. Greg A. Uh, thank you guys. Greg A made it by. He was moderating. Uh, Moderated more than I am. So I want to thank them. I want to thank everybody for the super chats. Carlos, again, for your generosity. I know you had a super chat. Jamil yeah. did. You know, uh, some others as well. I, I can't remember all of them, actually. I wish they listed them, and then I could do that. But uh, thank you all who came to watch. Appreciate you guys in the live chat participating in the dialogue. Keeping Sorry, we didn't get fresh. to you all the time. Yeah, and if you guys could, before we kind of finish up here, uh, if you could just like this video. And if you're watching this on the replay, big shout out to the replay crew. Thank you guys for watching as well. Um, any any closing? Yeah, get those likes up before we get out of here. But, How do uh, we get 66 likes? It's been two hours. I know. People we just aren't hitting that like button. So what happens on the YouTube thing is... People are afraid if, of that like button. No, no. If you're If you're watching with the live chat activated... You can't like it from that view. You have to X out of the live chat option, then the thumbs up and Only the on thumbs mobile. Down yeah. So if you're doing this, oh, on I did on my computer stuff. all the time. Yeah. yeah. I've seven likes with 65 watching. I just put it on my phone right now just to see. Uh, Greg A, there is legit. I have one hater. Like there is one person oh, who, yeah. who always dislikes every single one of my videos. It's one. I think it's out of love, though. I actually, I love that guy. He's so important to me. Like I, I just I thank we, him for everything he does, bro. We constantly hey. try to do better to make him happy, bro. But he's the best, bro. I love him so yeah. much. If he's out there, if he's still watching, thank you. 
<laughs> I appreciate you. The the world's best diabolical hater resides on the SMT Nation, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Did Tom just uh, give us a thumbs down? That's okay. We can have an extra hater here and there. It's all good. Tom, you're good in timeout. No, no, don't time out, Tom. No. <laughs> Hold on. I think he hated this us. Bad Pete. Bad Pete. This is for the haters right here. You're about to stay <laughs> right here, bro. We got you. We got you oh for the my haters. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. So I can't, let's... I can't wait to get Super Chat on my channel. <laughs> oh, it takes a while, man. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll be able to get me a 5G phone. Carlos, thanks, bro. Appreciate the super chat. Yeah, that's awesome. the haters, man. <laughs> I, like, I like how his uh, super chat's magenta. Yeah, how'd you do that, Carlos? Oh, look at that. Carlos, how'd you do that, bro? I don't know. It's just magic, man. It just happened. <laughs> Carlos, the big homie. Thank you, everybody who was here to watch, watching this on replay or on the live. If you could, please like this video on the way out. We're going to wrap things up here. Any closing statements, uh, Ricky? Oh, no. We, we covered Carlos. a lot of ground tonight. It was great. Yeah, we did. Glad Carlos, to help everybody yeah. out. Anything? Well, um, I mean, no. I mean, that's it. Let's, let's wanted, get another video up this week. Let's do another cast this week. I want to do we'll my do two favorite shout outs. One, AT&T. Without them, I would not be <laughs> indexing the U.S.'s frequencies. <laughs> Thank you for outsourcing <laughs> to India. <laughs> two... The TCP department at CU Boulder. I'm a grad student. <laughs> All right. Oh, I do have one comment. And they're the ones doing the index. Good for them. Somebody has to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I do got one comment. I can't wait to see what John says after at and announced their itty-bitty 5G low-band output. Yes. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's gonna be I can't going wait ham to see on what Twitter. That is. <laughs> All right, he's gonna dog him. That's gonna be funny. Maybe I'll do a reaction video or something this week. <laughs> or, 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 or next maybe, week. Maybe it might. Maybe it might be Mike doing it. Who knows? Because uh, maybe is, he maybe more. Maybe we should do that midweek or Friday. We'll uh, we'll do a a John a tribute to John Leisure or something. We're at oh, seventy. He ain't leaving for another four months. I know, but he's that's it. He's that's it. That's it. Early goodbye party. What decisions are left to be made? Yeah, I mean that's it. The merger. We, we the only got thing one I would decision. <laughs> How well to tell? No, I'm not going to say it's not appropriate. Uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know. I I think the biggest mistake up to this point was that they didn't have Mike Seaver as the head of the merger representation. It shouldn't have been John. It should have been Mike. Yes, I agree on that one. But, you know, John is transparent. He's not hiding from anything. But that was the one thing, if they wanted to maintain that transparency and open, and, and if this was brewing for the last year, like people make it seem, they should have had Mike out there, I think, more. Like, making him the face of it now, you know, people are just going to talk smack, and you know the states are going to be yeah. mentioning it, and you know how that And goes. they're going to think that, he abandoned, that he's abandoning the ship. and Yeah, uh, you're, yeah. That, you're I don't that. buy into that, bro. He was gone regardless, and they've made it very clear, with or without the merger. Yeah. It looks like he was walking away on good terms with the whole so, thing. So, as I pointed out in the video you did um, regarding John leaving T-Mobile, um, different uh, executive-level officers... Um, have contracts, and in the contracts, there can be some strong language saying you can only work for us this long, um, and you cannot be rehired, you cannot get an extension. Do we have those details, Pete? I need to find it, but I'm assuming that when he was hired seven years ago, they said you're going to work for seven years. If you can hit certain benchmarks with network development, you're getting a bonus. And after seven years, you're no longer CEO. No exceptions. Let's do. Um, let's cover this topic this week. Let's see if we can arrange it. Yeah. I'll get us. I'll get us all in a group email or a group chat, and we'll we'll see if we can hash okay. it out. I think this is a topic we could uh, we could do an entire stream on. But exactly. but yeah, there's a really good chance they took a gamble with him um, seven years ago and had no idea he'd play out this well. Of course. 
All right, let's do this. Let's save this for another night. We'll do a podcast. We'll we'll figure it out and we'll make it work. But for now, on behalf of Ricky Florida Keys, the Bearded Dragon, Pete himself, and Carlos of Vegas fame, and I am the SMT. We thank you guys for being here. We hope you have a great rest of the evening, and we will catch you guys on the next podcast. Deuces. Peace. Peace. Hey, it's the wrong way, Carl.